He's a phenomenal control player. Kinnan, Bonda Prodigy is a powerhouse in any ramp strategy, providing unparalleled mana acceleration and the ability to cheat massive creatures into play with these. So I give this one 5 woke canisters. No siemano. Hello, hello. Welcome chat after the pause. <coughs> siema. It's pretty good siema. Spelled perfectly. I'm oh, pretty great today. Thank you for asking, Olsen. Thank you for the sub, Mr. Chimba. We are about to see how many Bonder prodigies are in this upcoming Modern Horizons set. So I guess the cards are not on Modo yet. Will they be there with today's update? Is there an update today? I have to assume there is. So we are going to be performing the set review. He's a phenomenal control player. Through... I give myself five woke canisters. Eight here least, though. It's gonna be actually... More convenient to do and then to share some. I pulled out most of the cards that I thought were worth talking around. Uh, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 5, 6, 6 razy 16 to jest jakieś 100 coś kart. So it's a bit over 100 cards. Out of 300. So like one third of the cards seem... You know, worth talking about and then like also... Just ignore some of the model DFC lands, so... It's pretty large. How many cards were playable out of MH2 actually? Let's check. Well, I hope that you can still have fun 
hanging around with the chat then also if not uh, by not through learning about the new synergies and all that stuff modern horizons 2 sorted by price and tickets so how many playable cards are there in mh2 Will this review be on YouTube later? Yes. So in MH2 we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. No, not fetches. Alright, minus 5. This is 1 to 60. This is all playable cards. Well. Imperial Recruiter and Sanctum Prelate maybe not so much, but kind of. So probably had around 60 cards that end up being playable in MH2. Well, there's cards like Breaker, Calvation Relay here, so... Those are not very tickets expensive, like uh, arguably Goblin Arc, Arc Monster is fine, right? Showed up, Hard Evidence. Let's check for whether Sanctum Prelate has achieved any any results ever. Yeah, some amounts. Celestial Life Gain, this year even. Sixty first place in the Modern Showcase Challenge. Four Sanctum Prelate, four Oriok Champion, holy guacamole. No yellow guy on the set review today, no yellow guy. Just the canny guy. Soul Cauldron and Helia seems solid, that should be explored more. Oh, and here goes Imperial Recruiter, alright, so... Are you ready, chat? I need five of you to say I am ready in the chat and then we begin the review. Holy shit, we got six so so quickly. Alright, so MH3. We are also going to try to not make it He's overwhelmingly long. Control player. Mr. Beast. Uh, some cards don't need to be spoken about in so much detail. If they are only mildly interesting. Uh, this tier list goes you know up to down five woke canisters, one woke canister. Pretty pretty simple. Oh yeah, keg keg W tier. How do we add an extra one? Uh add it all below. Dobra. Sort by color. Alright, first we got Ajani Nakatl Pariach. 
enters makes a friend cat. When another cat dies, you may transform. Kevk? No, it's Kekv. Plain soccer. This is gonna be the first time I will read this with actual attention being paid. So let's go through the abilities. Free starting loyalty. Plus two. Plus two abilities on plain soccer is famously good at keeping them alive. Put a counter on each cat you control. Zero. Create a cat so that you can make your first ability do something. And if you control a red permanent other than Ajani, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. Minus four, so achievable a turn after you got your Ajani out. Each opponent chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a plane soaker from among the non permanents you control, then sacrifices the rest. So not a groundbreaking ult, but could be pretty strong depending on the situation and Johnny seems pretty powerful to me. Um, he does have a certain cat tribal element. So gonna be interested in playing it alongside other cats, which is pretty fortunate that like there is a cat themed deck and modern right now. Where you could potentially slot it. It's a little bit more of a mid range card than an aggro card, but I guess. Depending on the matchup, I could see Ajani as pretty powerful. I'll give him 3 out of 5 Woke Canisters. Seems like a solid 2 drop that will see play. You have played against it, you don't need cats. Yeah, certainly you don't need cats, you are rewarded for having some, making the ability better, so... It's nice if you can smuggle some extra cats into your deck, it's not a requirement. Uh, two toughness, so yeah, it's playable, it's good. It's literally two mana Gideon ally, exactly. Let's give it 4, it seems pretty powerful, like it's a fair card, but in the fair matchups it seems okay. Now let's do the last check, does Ajani should face with the... To face, he does should face, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. So you make a creature you ping for at least one, but like if you just have some more idiots laying around and you can just spam a card every turn. He just shoots villains. That ups my evalu evaluation of Ajani because now it seems just great. Although against matchups like let's say Amulet, it's gonna be hard to flip it. So I'll rate it as a four out of five. Seems like a good two drop and all expected to see play. Maybe alongside a sacrifice outlet where you can flip it easily. All the sack outlets are gonna be typically black, and then we are in a Marducat uh, area, which sounds pretty awkward. Now, let's also say an important thing that I should have prefaced the entire review with. This is the third Modern Horizons set. Uh. We already seen two both of the times you know some of the cards looked underwhelming and then they turned out to be great oftentimes modern horizons cards were revealed to us spoiled players dismissed some of them on the basis of those cards not slotting cleanly into existing archetypes so what is important is to look for cards that are strong enough to spawn archetypes on their own. Most likely there is a bunch of those and like you know from what I've seen there is a bunch of those. So do not let that limit your mind.
holy shit my tls here is unordered so we're gonna be having to just type the names in all right orim's chant a reprint from many many years ago white silence if kicked creatures can attack this turn Strictly better silence. It does target, which means that the one ring can stop it, but besides that, sure. So it is just a silence. I it is a card that like people like to talk about on the internet. I certainly encountered the name in discussions, never in decklist though. Uh, there is like the joke with Isa Conceptor around this card where you just lock your opponent out of casting and attacking every turn, but I think that's... Kaiko might be a little bit harsh, because, like, Silence is... arguably, like, playable sometimes, right? You can, like, I don't, I don't know, you can have a deck like Ad Nauseum, or just anything. Silence is, like, yeah, Silence, you know, also, like, a cyborg card against Cascade. Cascade doesn't exist all, all that much anymore, but... Uh, it's gonna be functioning in that role, just mostly a slight upgrade to silence, but not even really. No, one is unplayable. Kek is if cards are really funny, so... An example of a Kek of card was... Squirrel cards in the match too. But yeah, I don't really expect you to play is a conceptor with this. Now I'm actually cu curious. Was there a an is a conceptor deck that made a model result in modern in the past let's say five years? What do you think, chat? Will there be one? No. Five decks. Modern prelim. Twenty eighth place. So like they it's possible they didn't, didn't do too well, but they had silence and one is a conceptor, so Orange Chant was spoiled specifically for this person, Margin underscore call. Twenty twenty blue red. A lot of secrets. Holy guacamole, logic nut. What a good card to <laughs> imprint. Deprive. The five out. Yeah, those were the times. So, Orange Shan cyborg card. Monumental Henge. A part of a cycle, every color gets a land that enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a planes. It's very convenient that it doesn't ask for a basic, just the land type, so it does actually fit into fetchland mana bases and it's just reasonably playable to run those and depending on those effects they might just be really good. Really good utility lands. And in the case of the white one monumental henge Four tabs, so uh, effectively five mana, look at top five, reveal a history card and put it into your hand. Free for mono white, irrelevant otherwise. Not necessarily only for mono white. Like I could, you know, this is a powerful mana sync effect. So like uh, you look five deep and you grab some of your great cards, assuming you can, you're playing this in a deck that runs... Uh... The fairies, the wanderings, maybe even Omnath. Yeah, sideboard artifact cards. I don't know, it seems pretty pretty great. Like it is a land, it's a pretty low cost to include, so I think it's pretty based. Now, 
One thing that is stinky is that they did print another moon effect. So I guess every utility land fights tooth and nail against basic lands. So that's a little bit of a stinker. Finds binding. I think bindings are not historic. Well, one moon effect and like one other way to punish on basics, yeah. So that's like a little bit awkward, but I think the effect is pretty strong. I I expect to see this like a bunch, one copy maybe if the co if the cost is not if the opportunity cost is not too high, but I guess the payoff is it's pretty decent. Not too long ago we've seen Castle Vantress in modern pop up, right? And this is just so much Better. It's like miles better of an activation land. Next one. Yeah, Martyr could definitely play it. Martyr a mono white deck, typically with some splashes. Plenty of planes that fits. Also, lot pride. White mana, first line, lifelink, ascend. If you end step, if you gained life this turn, create a cut. If you have City's Blessing for each token you control that entered this turn, create a token that's a copy of it. And it's a 1-1. One, one. Um, so I don't get this card, it has the Mythic symbol, which kind of seems to imply that it's supposed to be playable, but one toughness creatures that need to survive just aren't. In modern, unless they're Ragavan, and this seems way tamer than Ragavan. It's an anointed procession if you have a sand, which like happens at some point, but it does block Ragavan, yeah. But like, I think it's probably pretty unplayable. Like, I I think it's pretty unfair to put it at one because it probably will see some play. Some minimal am amount of play. I don't think it should see play. Seems like a pretty low impact. Tame monster with many weaknesses and low upside. It is a card for Ajani, so I guess the there is a combo here. I'm confused about this being a mythic though, like because it just seems as if it was surgically made as a constructed card, but then it's not. It's not made as one. Savine the Chronoclasm is not in modern, but Savine's reclamation will. For free mana, we get to unearth a permanent. If we cast Reclamation from the graveyard, we get to copy it and unearth two things, also flashback. So my understanding is that this, I guess, played in every other commander, commander deck as a way to combo with Underworld Breach or stuff like that. I don't fully understand what they do with it. So enlighten me, Chad, if you... If you know, but Cosmic Rebirth is being played for comparison. Yeah, Cosmic Rebirth seems some minor play. Seven's Reclamation seems pretty obviously stronger. I don't really get why people play Cosmic Rebirth all that often, but yeah, I guess they do. Seven's Reclamation is, is similar, but also has flashback, so good against. Uh, Stuff like grief scam, you get to keep it in your graveyard for later use. Gifts and given target, yeah, that's a good idea. Gifts and given is solid. 
uh, puts it into your graveyard. If you have, if you have uh, grinding station, breach, combo in your deck, you can mill yourself, find reclamation, flashback, find breach, combo off, stuff like that. So probably in a context like this, but doesn't seem too absurd to me and it's a card I've, I always fail to understand that it shows up in cube too in some legacy decks it was I think it was popular back when you could run Underworld Breach in legacy uh, with LED brains freeze then you just had like a big combo easy combo in your deck that this type of a card doesn't typically do too much in modern. Next we have Wrath of the Skies. So Holy shit, it references Wrath of God by being named Wrath. That's very clever. First of the energy cards. The energy theme in MH3, let's say it exists, but it's not particularly strongly accentuated. You probably won't really have decks that are energy decks but you'll have some decks that will dabble in energy cards many of the energy cards are self-sufficient just having some like maybe minor cross cross play between when one and the other but by no means Wrath of the skies doesn't need to go into an energy deck it can just go into a deck and Then you can do some stuff with uh, your super fluous energy later if you have some outlets. So we pay white, white X, we get X energy, then for we can pay any amount of energy, destroy each artifact, creature, and a summoned with mana value less than or equal to the amount of energy paid this way. Big thing about this card. Well, it sweeps creatures, but not only. It sweeps all the relevant tournament types. And it also lists the tournament types, which means that it does get to interact with Urza Saga. Now, I'm imagining facing this card as Amulet. Certainly, it could be problematic if I will try to go Saga, Saga. It's a common line. Uh, especially like typically a good line against the control decks of the format, the blue white Narset control decks that occasionally popped up and now if they were to decide to play Wrath of the Skies it's a really dangerous line and Saga is a very dangerous card to play post -port. now if you want to sweep a real board it gets much more expensive, let's say your opponent controls a grief suddenly standalone you need to pay six mana to sweep it so upsides and downsides so i guess the comparison that one of each other's made to pest control is pretty apt because it's probably most usable as a way to sweep small permanents of various types rather than just creature boards. So I expect Wrath of the Skies to be a sideboard card, probably showing up a moderate amount. It gets better if you combine it with the other energy cards. I was talking about how standalone they can be, but I guess if you do run Tune the Narrative, then suddenly it can become a blue, white, white 
sweep the board. Which at that point is really good. I'll give it a free. Less excited about this than I am about monumental hench, but alas. Next in line is Recruiter of the Guard. A busted card, you say? Now, it's interesting because it's the mirrored version of Imperial Recruiter, which MH2 brought to modern and which did absolutely nothing. So your argument is that it grabs solitude, which fair. Well, it is true that I guess you know the creature's power depends on what cards it can grab and probably the selection in white, white two toughness or less it seems better than red two power or less. Even just glimpsing this quick list here on Scryfall. And also white is a more natural coral color to run ephemerate and stuff like that in. Now it is still a free mana one one, so you're not really going to run the recruiter for value because the value is pretty minimal. Yeah, I was checking Imperial Recruiter because, well, the recruiter was in modern and wasn't playable, so I was trying to look if it actually can tutor any good creatures. Major difference, scraps Flicker Wisp. So certainly this is better than Imperial Recruiter. Now it's still a free mana 1-1. One, one. Uh, I've seen deck lists with Primal Prayers, which is the new Alren, where creatures like that are pretty nice once they become free. There was also another argument I have heard about the Recruiter of the Guard that made me believe my intuition that it's not a particularly strong card in modern. That being the fact that Recruiter of the Guard is a card that people have memories of casting, existing and playing against in the format of Legacy, where it's commonly played in the DNT deck, which is somewhere. Or the Stone Blades. Do we have any? Yeah, we have four Recruiter of the Guard. But the reason why Recruiter of the Guard is so much better in Legacy than it would be in Modern is that in Legacy with Wasteland, people lose lands, but your vials stick up. So your entire deck makes sense. Like you get to a point of the game where you actually can vial in recruiter profitably do some stuff and like fetch your flicker wisp and that's actually a meaningful thing uh in modern people just make land drops so you end up spending three mana only one one when your opponent spends four mana only one ring so I think Recruiter playable in like Primal Prayers combo lines if you 
want to use it that not really at its face value. Recruiter finding soul to this spog says with chatter. As as said many, but imagine that you instead draw like a playable card and like you don't happen to draw a soul to in your draw. Like it's not like you want to draw ten solos every game. He's a phenomenal control player. That's a five. So that's my those are my thoughts on recruiter of the guard. Yeah, exactly. Tier CS. Play ring, draw your soul toots. That does sound like a solid alternate plan to me. Guide of Souls. For white mana, we get a 1 2. Whenever another creature ETBs, you gain one life and you get an energy. Whenever you attack, you may pay free energy to turn your creature into a angel with two extra 1-1 one -one counters. Now, this card is real. You see that they made it too toughness to actually make it playable. Which, otherwise, you know, the classic... Soul Warden type effects that this is modeled after weren't particularly modern playable for a long time before that, but really wouldn't be any good nowadays. This card also mentions energy, it also gives you a mana sink for said energy, which is nice. Once again, we see the trend of making the Energy cards, self-sufficient. And this, this is probably like a way to... Gain a pretty decent amount, amount of energy. So if you have energy needs, let's say Primal Prayers that we just mentioned earlier. This seems like a great pairing with Guide of Souls you actually get to chain chain your cards and you know guide of souls primary players that's maybe the one situation in which i can see recruiter of the guard being impressive where you can just fetch every copy of recruiter from your deck put those on the battlefield then finish off with something in fact it's not too hard to loop and gain infinite life well, from what i've seen so far there is both shrieking drake in the very same set, which is ETB returning creature control to its owner's hand, 1-1-1-1, one, 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 one. pretty shitty card, but lets you just replay itself forever to gain life. There is Rubble Belt Rampa Rampa Gear, which is called Green Belt, not Rubble Belt Rampager. When ETBs you may Pay, pay two energies if you can't, yada yada, so it just bounces itself, so with Guide of Souls and Rampager, as long as you keep your energy low enough, you can't you can't have three energy as you're casting Green Belt Rampager, you need to have two or less. You just get to play a Rampager and pick it up over and over and over again, which uh, Gives you infinite life, which is already built with like the Guide of Souls. So that seems like a pretty interesting basis of a combo deck. Maybe combined with Heliod style decks of old. Maybe combine it with Nadu Winged Wisdom, which we're gonna talk about in length later. And true lol, you need to have here an energy. Now you kurva płacisz za ten prima prayers. Ziomeczku. A potem sobie stakujesz trigger jak chcesz. So certainly you can do a lot of stuff and Guide of Souls. Mostly poised for that. If you want to gain energy in some other ways, that's also possible and then...
Gyro Souls actually breaks Rampage Online Combo. No kurwa cię zbanuje zaraz. Typie ci powiedziałem przed chwilą, że nie, nie breakuje. No stakujesz te triggery jak chcesz. So... I'll give it four. Alongside a Johnny, it seems pretty. Pretty, pretty nice. I think a combo deck like this could be pretty playable. And you know how times change. We used to, when your opponent played a 10 1 guide, it used to be a much different experience than it's gonna be in the future. As I assume that this card will be seen much more often than Goblin Guida. Which enchanter? This enchanter. This is like official explanation of the of the name. I watched the stream and that's the explanation they given for that. They wanted it to be the joke. Which enchanter? This enchanter. That's why they call it like this. So it's not, this This is like wizards approved, that's is not even me being funny. Uh, other than that, let's speak briefly on the topic of the MDFCs. In this set there is, I believe, two MDFCs per color. That have the ETBs, you may pay free life if you don't, and then there's the battlefield tap text. And also a set of 10 dual lands MDFCs, which always enter tapped but produce two colors. He's a phenomenal control player. It's a double cycle, there is like, yeah, 10 of those. So, I'm pretty surprised by those getting printed. All that those lands were ever used for in modern was... just Belcher and Oops of Spells decks, right? And... Neoform occasionally, I guess, was also like... this This type of stuff, this is normally not heavily encouraged type of a deck building not heavily encouraged by the way they design cards but here we are they just made 10 of those so now an oops all spells deck or a belcher deck will actually have a mana base that is playable and has lands that are of the correct colors and are untapped instead of a pile of balagads and on off color emeria Course, so. so those are solid which enchanter is a see this enchant monster like useful to have access to probably also useful for vintage decks with chrome mocks like the initiative deck and vintage would happily play this over uh mera skull for sure And yeah, it lets you play like a main Descendant. So it's pretty hard for to place those cards specifically, but like a pretty big deal for the Weirdo decks. Um, not very interested in playing this in like the fair context too much. Right? No, white. Sometimes Scryfall corrects your query to something that doesn't yield any results either. I am curious as to how come... Why, why does it do that? Alas. White Orchid Phantom is a white white creature, so pretty hard cost to... Support, but we get a flying first strike. 
ETB Field of Ruin. I guess allegedly, I guess not really Field of Ruin, you just... Well, you don't search for a land, but like I guess like it is implied because you are also not sacrificing a land. So it is kind of a, a Field of Ruin trigger. Now my Amulet Titan playing... Also tapped, yeah. My Amulet Titan playing... Uh, part of myself is pretty scared of cards like this. Yet another card that punishes villains for not playing basics pretty, pretty heavily because this is just putable in your deck if you can support the mana cost and then if you can combine it with Ephemerate or some other ways to blink, it's just can get pretty crazy, pretty early. So I fear for my semi growth chambers and you should fear for your Urza's Towers. Because this, this is a really troublesome card that you might need to play against. Now, it's probably not really a main deck card in most cases. It's more of a sideboard tool, but it seems like a pretty strong one and seems more effective for modern compared to the other cards in the lower tier, so I think it is fair to place it in tier 4. Yeah, combos with Learning Arbiter and Shadow of Doubt, those are all great suggestions, chat. It also combos with another card on the list, which, you know, this one to punch, Thalia, curved into White Orchid Phantom, Holy guacamole, my lands are all dead. You had your own Flaxons and someone scammed your Flaxons back. Holy fucking shit, that gains you so much value. Thalia, Exuberant Shepherd. Uh, during the MH3 preview stream, this was confirmed to be Michael Majors' dog. Depicted. So, just as a par part, just a little trivia. You play fairly and pass. You play Primal Titan and attack for lethal. That's one way it could go, but if villain plays Felia, plays White Orchid Phantom and then blinks it, then suddenly you don't play Amulet Titan. You don't, you don't play your Primal Titan, you just just sit there. Which is what you could be worried about for 2 mana flash. When attacks, blink, beginning of end, end step, return. If entered under your control, put a counter on dog. Uh, it is a little bit of a two mana two two. Yeah, six basics in Titan from now on. We have to protect ourselves. This not working ETB is us. Well, it does work with ETBs, just with other ETBs. But it is a bit of a case of a two mana two two. That needs to attack to gain value. It does have flash, which mitigates that a little bit, but is also reliant on your other cards and not doing all too much by itself. That said, if you can combine it with an effective tool in a matchup, as you just mentioned, why Orchid Phantom against uh, Titan or some graveyard exiling creature against Sodek. That's okay. Yeah, you can also target your opponent's creatures, so I guess you can attack your opponent, blink their Goblin Shaman token and just goes away. So, there is some usability to failure and I think it will show up in decks.
Or the Saga constructs, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Can play it on two, play play Nadu on three and blink your Nadu to get a trigger. Oh, well, that's nice, right? Bunch of stuff available for the Dogster, but still a little bit scary to play just a two mana two two. Static. Prison. Yes, Hammond. For white mana, you exile anything and you get two energies, but then, beginning of your pre combat main phase, you have to sacrifice static prison unless you pay energy. Slightly weird that it happens at pre combat main phase, not on upkeep, but I guess it is more user friendly that way because you will get to see what you draw before you make a decision. Exile target non land permanent and point control. So, yeah, it just a ley line binding, but sorcery. But you also have to pay the upkeep cost of energy. One of the other white. One of the other white energy cards was a sweeper. So, this doesn't really pair all that well with a sweeper. Like, you can. Put those two cards in your deck together and play Static Prison and then elect not to pay the cost, sacrifice it and then cast your Sweeper. But it's just gonna be like a removal spell is cheap and hits anything. So if being cheap and hitting anything is good then it's probably okay to play if you have some sideways ways of generating some extra energy then it also can be more beneficial probably you need to be ending the game at some point in a deck that will be interested in that and if your deck is a domain deck you'll just you know run better removal spells like leyline binding and likely like the best place for this would be a white deck that can support leyline binding or Prismatic ending because you probably run those over static prison if you can. I'll give it to you. pretty rough in multiples. Well, I mean, every single individual one is as rough as the first one was, so is it? Flower of Faith. Wait, that's not this one. <laughs> so yeah, Flower of Faith, 2 mana, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. If it's a human, instead it gets plus 3, plus 3 and gains indestructible. Pretty good in the 5 color humans deck in modern. I really don't know why they chose not to make this white member of the cycle free, unlike the other cards. But we have to play with what we've been given, so. Alright, Flare of Fortitude, though. Two white, white, instant. You may sacrifice a non token white creature rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Until end of turn, your life total can't change, and permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible. So, a word about flares. Uh, I tried to build a few decks that would support the green flare and the blue flare. I also tried to build a Leyline Zubera Flare Storm deck, but that was more of a that was not particularly serious and I abandoned it at some point. The idea would be to put Leyline of the Gilbacked into play and then just play Zubera's 
rally the ancestors and copy rally the ancestors with your red flare and just eventually kill your opponent with ember fist zubera of course like that the deck doesn't work unless you get leyline of the guild pact in play so like i just put some cards together and i gave up so on a more serious note I did try to build around the blue flare and the green flare because the effects seemed powerful and I looked through available monsters in those colors that you could sacrifice and let me tell you the requirement to sacrifice a non-token creature of a certain color is very stringent there is not much to work with it also probably depends on the color i didn't look through cheap white creatures but white is the color of doomed traveler so it's probably easier to do let's take a look now still you probably don't want to like Why do you get a giant's welcome when I said type creature? So it's actually pretty hard to... Find playable creatures that you are happy to play and want to sacrifice to. In white, I guess, like maybe it's tiny bit better with cards like Novice Inspector, but those are not really, still, not really modern cards that you want to be putting in your deck, modern deck, all that much. I'm just staring at the Ariok Transfixer because. The Amalia one drop with flashback, yeah, well, that's, again, that's a card you could sacrifice, but is, is it a card you want to have in your modern deck for sacrificing? Now, that was about the green and the blue flares, which have strong effects. And Flare of Fortitude, it's a little bit different. Your lifestyle can't change and permanent you control gain hexproof and indestructible so it's supposed to protect you from harm and protect your monsters from sweepers so maybe perhaps in such a an angle right but i really can, don't see this being put together into a functional deck uh an interesting thing about Flare is that it can be a free way to make yourself unkillable for a turn and then like do like ad nauseum stuff. And yeah, 4 mana is just like way too much to cast. I think the white Flare is pretty unplayable, honestly. It's a decent cyborg card in Nadu. I can see that if you run enough white monsters, Stoneforge Mystic. Like I guess some nice things, like some some nice things you can do with the flares is that you can just you know evoke solitude, get the effect, flare the solitude. So if you're playing Solitude and you're doing something like Nadu where you're drawing a bunch of cards, then perhaps this could work. 
or if you're gonna have like a spare outrider encore which is gonna be a key card in future modern so get your outrider encores now It's good because the turn you go off in Nadu, you're taking a lot of damage fetching lands and playing shocks. Well, the funky thing about the flare is that since your lifestyle can't change, you can't activate fetch lands. So I don't know if that's really a strong argument for that. I think it's just not playable. I think I'll put it in, in one and it fits there tune the narrative is blue instant draw a card get two energy this is a decent cost good now to list sure I was thinking about Nadu Liss, I'm pretty sure there should be a Dryad Arbor and a Yavimaya. I like Nissa though, Nissa's pretty cool. But also if you run company then the vault over Arbor maybe. No, no, the point is that you like get a fetch land and fetch Ar Dryad Arbor. This is one Shuka though. I don't know if this is that good of a list, my friend, but seems like a good place to start. Cool ideas. So tune the narrative. How big of a cost is it to play blue blind draw cantrip? Literally a cycler. I think a pretty 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 solid. Like pretty pretty bad downside. So you could run it to support your energy cars, but I think you really wouldn't want to. It's probably better than attune with ether though. It's like so much like fetching basics is it's just so rough and modern. When you, you need your fetch lands to fetch your basics, you need your opponents, wide orchard phantoms to fetch your basics, you just can't afford to play a tune with ether to fetch your basics. Uh, even in the energy deck, is tune better than preordain? Yeah, depends how strong your, like how much your energy cards get out of this and like what are you gonna play the Static Discharge to deal 5 damage. That's fine. But you could just deal 6 with Unholy Hit too. Like how false cover is Ritual for Merktide? Yeah, this is this, this type of a card. I'll give it 2 out of 5. It seems pretty hard to actually play. That's a very all in combo list. Spike tried more blue creatures and four flares. Enough to untap with Nadu. Yeah, I've seen Spike's decks. Nadu, I've written an article for Hariruya. It's gonna be up for about the cards. It's gonna be up there in a well few days. I hope. But it's a very interesting card, you can go mid-range or combo with it. 
Next we have Volatile Storm Drake. Uh, 2 mana free 2, flying hex will from activate and trigger the abilities, ETB exchange control of drag and target creature by controls, if you do you get 4 energy then sacrifice the creature unless you pay and then blah 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 blah. Uh, not particularly interested in storm drag but it is a source of a large amount of energy on a creature for a potential primal prayers deck so i could see storm drake show up in a prayer stack as a tutor target where you just intend to give it to your opponent while sacrificing the whatever creature so i can see it in like that role. other than that not particularly into that Basking Brute Scale. Don't see Basking Brute Scale of the green cards. Is everyone ignoring it because they think it's bad? Seems pretty bad to me, yeah. Two card combo with multiple other cards. That's like infinite spawns with Rosy Cotton. It's like a two into a three. Okay. I can see that being pretty useful. The combo being infinite spawns and infinite size. To jest stało, czemu się zamknęło? Środkowe kółko zamyka? O kurwa. Jak się otwiera nowe? Co jest Rosy Cotton? When you create a token, put a counter on creature and then like you create a token and you put a counter on creature and then you have like a very big root wall. Like, how do you kill if they chum the brute scale or remove it? Holy shit, that's true. You're gonna have infinite colorless mana, which you can probably do something with. You're gonna have infinite colorless blockers too, which is also not nothing. But indeed, getting through a blocker is not gonna be trivial. The point is, Skyrock is better when then it if you want to combo with rosy well that's partially true but also rosy is a free drop so having a two drop that curves into it, it seems entirely better than than that that's a pretty nice combo volatile drag like prayer card. Harbinger of the Tides of the Seas. I thought it's called Harbinger of the Tides. Now, I'm puzzled by this card because on some level I get it. It's a merfolk. And it makes lands into islands. And Magus is a proven strong card type and merfolk benefit from your opponent controlling islands so you get to force them to make them control islands but i'm just so baffled by the fact they printed a magus effect once again and yes i am in fact an amulet player which means that uh, it's specific it's it's hate specifically targeted against me but it's 
like the same shit as the original Blood Moon, right? Blood Moon, enchantment that you can't kill with red cards. Harbinger, blue creature which you can't kill with blue cards. Why, why do this? So, I think it's kind of bullshit that they made it exist, but... This is the... world we live in, I guess, and... Here's hoping that the fact that it caused double blue makes it a little bit awkward to run. It also means that previously decks in modern were built with the assumption that red is not a relevant basic land color. So mountains were actually pretty bad and pretty rarely ran in red decks. You avoided doing that. Now we actually have a pretty good reason to be to run a mountain in in your red decks because your opponent might play this one against you and then you would really want to have access to your lightning bolt. What is Blue Storm's Wrath? I'm afraid it's Colossal Sky Turtle. But yeah, the card is obviously very strong. Will there be a blue moon deck again in modern? Well, there will be blue decks playing moon. I don't know. So it's gonna be a blue moon deck. You can play Harbinger and Harbinger and then run charms and counter spells freely alongside it. Next card is Sink into Stupor. Harbinger can be rest with the one mana black spell, right? So you can turn to it. Dot dot dot. Holy fucking shit, that's true. But I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, singing to stupor. This is kind of insane. Like for for a flip land, the quality of this card is just very high. Three mana, bounce a spell or permanent point controls. It's just so flexible. It's not even like as unsubstantiated. You just get to bounce any permanent, non permanent, I guess. It's not. It's not really Ottawara at home. This is this card is. It's main deck. Stack interaction in an oops all spells deck. Or in a living end deck. Yeah, you can just your opponent plays the fair, you can just like use your land to bounce it. So I'm pretty baffled by the strength of the spell on the backside, like it costing three mana, like it feels like if it wasn't blue, they would cost it that four or something. But yeah, they made it blue, as I said. Yeah, I guess blue has to be the strongest color. I'll give it four out of five. I guess five is maybe a bit too much, but it's just like insanely strong of a spell to put on a land. Hello Mr. Streamer, I just watched the Amulet video. Normally I would write something in a silly, playful manner, but I'm too impressed for that. Great job on the video. Thank you. And everyone else in the chat. Take a look and on my YouTube channel. At my YouTube channel. 
oh, I made a video where I talk about the entire history of the Amulet Titan deck and you might find it interesting if you played through that eras or if you hadn't. So yeah, like the upside of Sync into Stupor is that it is a fake card. It's not a land, right? It's not a spell. It's a spell land. Oops, all spells. It works. Pitch to your boss of negation, it works. Have more stack interaction and board interaction in the living end, that works. I place it at four out of four out of five wall canisters. It's it's impressive. Costs three mana, so you don't cascade into it. Yeah, it comes into play untapped. That's that's the joke with all of the lands. All of the lands come into play untapped, except for the dual lands in this set. Can you find it with transmute? The if you transmute Dimir House House Guard, then yes. Probably I'm not even correct. If you transmute Fantas Drift of Phantasms, then you can, yeah. Free life is not nothing though. Sure, Sodic. That's why I give it four and not five. Next in line, Kozilek's unsealing. For free mana, you get it as Hammond. When you cast a moderately expensive creature spell, you get two Scions. When you get when you cast a giga expensive blue spell, you draw three cards, which probably are all aware of the joke with this card. It's Mirror Enforcers, and then you get to draw perhaps your deck. I tried to put that together, and I was held back by the mana base of Affinity, sucking major ass, but there perhaps is a little bit... There's perhaps something interesting there. Yeah, you don't even have to cast a call as creature spell. This is not like Ugin's Labyrinth. There is a little bit of awkwardness because we're gonna get to Ugin's Labyrinth, but obviously one of the more impressive cards in the set. It does ask you to exile a specifically a colorless card with mana value seven or greater, and this asks you just to cast creature spells with mana value seven or, or greater. The major difference between those two triggers being uh, Fault Monitor. I did put Ugin's, Ugin's Labyrinth in that deck, that might have been a mistake. So, if you go, if you have cause like, like Let's say if you have specifically affinity with Kozlex and Ceiling, then you have mirror enforcers and foot monitors. You get to just draw a whole bunch of cards, maybe even cast some progmites. If you decide to run those, make spawns, then convert the spawns into spinning leaf drums to make blue mana, and then you can play. Thassa's Oracle, or whatever you wish to to win the game. So, you know, this type of stuff is possible. Uh, so I try to build it. It's not being trivial, but it might be doable. Retract? Retract is a nice suggestion, yeah. Retract would make your deck into a full-on combo deck, which probably is a bit awkward. Especially if you decide to run Artifact Lands. But I probably have to treat it as a free mana spell. 
not really like a card you can cheat with we can slab it enough too easily the unboxing is worse than construct from last set well that's one way to view this but Kozilek's Unsealing is a card that lets you perhaps draw your deck and win the game while Simulacrum Synthesizer is a card that lets you make a large amount of constructs. It would be nice to have both of those on the battlefield, but probably pretty hard to build your deck in a way where you support both. So yeah, I'll be looking into a Causal Exant Ceiling combination deck. It seems like this set is like a bit friendly towards combination decks. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Mm. One other challenge that I encountered when trying to visualize visualize a deck like this was that it would be most likely a mono blue deck. And it seemed a little bit tough to build it in a way where you just don't auto lose to your opponent resolving in Orcish Bowmasters and that is and probably will remain a little bit of an issue. But a pretty cool card with like a pretty good potential. Not sure how to build it yet. Set is pool, thank you for your input. Can run the new frog if I enchantment to deal with Bowmaster? Technically you can, yeah. Brain Surge is a 3 mana Giga Brainstorm, we draw 4, put back 2. This card is absolutely insane, probably... It's not fully unplayable on Modern, but... You can set up some, some stuff with that, you can like, benefit in some ways. Uh, I don't have the heart to give it a 1 out of 5, it seems like, slightly playable. Uh, now, this is also a card I wouldn't want to play if my opponent controls the Bowmasters or Shouldred. Working on Shafting Omni deck. Best Wincon, Fay of Wishes. Wow, other much Wincon, Zybeaster. Born upon the wind. The Caspers as well as they had flash. Why are we playing this? Ooh, Traverse is nice. You fetch your shifting woodland. Ledger Shadow. A little bit worried about this deck not playing any any one drops. What do you do if your opponent plays a Ragavan and just lose? Well, I mean, I guess you can like ignore it because your Wincon is a land. So it's not like you can beat Counter Magic. It's also not a given. Well, Lord and Reveal is pretty good. I guess you also have struggle against Bowmaster. Because even if you have missions, you need to cast your Lord and Reveal since Sea Gates. Cool deck, though. Bowmaster keeps uh, bullshit in line. Consign to memory. Memoary. Hi, oh, blue instant. Counter target triggered ability or colorless spell replicate. So it's like ceremonies rejection, but actually giga great because it does counter the cast Eldrazi's fully. Pre sold effect. The stream pros. 
can also scam grief. Well, it's like pretty generous to call it scamming grief. You counter your revoke trigger, so like you spend three cards to get a grief and discard your opponent's card. So you're down cards. Scams Lotus Field. Well, now that's a bit more interesting. It's also a replicate spell, so it works through Chalice of the Void, which is often in Coalesce decks. So it's just a pretty huge upgrade over Ceremonies Rejection, bringing it up from a forgotten and irrelevant card to something that's actually pretty good and pretty relevant. You'll see this in the sideboards. So any card got five. Yeah, Magus. Strix Serenade. Counter artifact creature, planeswalker spell. Control makes a bird. Yeah, replicate bypasses chalice because it copies the spell instead of casting it. So artifact and creature. Once again, it's pretty scary when I think of my Amulet Titan deck because it hits both the Titans and the rings. We'll see, Adam. Uh, probably like a sideboard card and like in grindy decks you probably will turn to different counters that don't give your opponent birds anyways swan song was literally only ever used in combo decks or amulet itself that tried to go off in some way so i'll i think it's actually not very playable i'll give it a two Tamio. There's so many Tamios. Five different Tamios. Which Tamio is your favorite chat? Mine is the field researcher. Tough is a bigger problem. Yeah, you definitely just need to run creature removal, otherwise you'll you'll die. Wall Tamio is your favorite. Which one's the Wall Tamio? I mean, War Tamio. Also, I like this one. This one. This one is cute. Alright, so Tamio Inquisitive Student. So blue mana flying, attacks investigate. When you draw your third card in a turn, exile Tamio, then blink her. As a planeswalker. So drawing a third card in a turn might sound challenging, but it does count your draw step card. So Tamio, draw step card, Misha's bubble card, and clue card flips it on turn two if you really want to, for example. Alternatively, you can just keep it as a blue monster and just keep attacking and amass clues. It's kind of a reverse Ragavan where Ragavan floods you in mana. If you don't answer it, then Ragavan gives you all the treasures, all the mana in the world, and just your opponent just needs a little tiny bit of action to destroy you. In their hand. Tamio is like a reverse Ragavan where 
She gives you all the time in the world. But she's making sure that later on she, the Tamiya player will have a bunch of value. Ragavan also gives cards. Not really for me. I mainly don't play decks with good Ragavan hits. But I guess that's true in like mirror matches of Ragavan decks. Mango just did that on a game, turn to flip Tamio. Holy shit, he has access to secret MH2 beta servers. The downside is that it doesn't damage ring players. Sure. It doesn't damage non-ring players either. It, it generally doesn't damage. It's a card advantage spell. But you know, it's a pretty cheap cheap one you need to spend the mana to crack loose but you can do that end of turn so you know playing a tamio and holding up counter magic that does seem pretty strong flipping on turn two is possible let's read the backside so the backside is jay's brand prodigy is better holy fuck i love based opinions like that Fulek. Nie widzę tam ja. So we start with two loyalty. Uh, plus two. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. So really hard to take her down with creatures. Plus two loyalty and like the power gets lessened. Minus three, return instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand with a green card, add one mana. And minus seven, draw half of your deck. So if you play, like if you flip her on turn two, plus up to four. On turn, t on turn 2, on turn 3 you have 6. And then on turn 5 you can draw half of your deck. Like, uh, really, that's not too crazy. That's just doable. I'm assuming that you will win the game once you ultimate Tamio. Although, of course, once again... It will be scary to activate the minus seven ability if your opponent is playing a black deck and could flash in Orkish Bow Masters. It is unfortunate that you can't minus it when she flips, but you also don't. Well, you need to flip her once you draw three, so it's not a question. It just happens. That's a little bit rougher. I thought that you can maybe just keep Tamio and keep drawing cards with like the front half. It's a little bit worse, but still, for a one drop, this card seems to have a pretty high impact on the game when you just deploy it and just start doing stuff. And just a very strong one mana card. Not necessarily a tempo card, but card advantageous. It's different than Agavan, but doesn't seem actually worse than Ragavan to me, it just seems different. Where Ragavan is leaning more aggressive, Tamio is probably beating the like Ragavan player in hand to hand combat by amassing greater card advantage. No, 5, 5, it's not the best in set, but 5, 5, 5, it's not the best. So, I like Tamio. Five is crazy high, Kani. We'll see. We'll look at this tier list in three months and we'll laugh. Triton, Wavebreaker. Oh, for blue, we get a 1 1 prowess. That gives prize to the as hunted creature and also has best stow. 
So the stall is actually a pretty insane mechanic. One of like the strongest mechanics that has ever existed. They just tricked you into not realizing that by making all the stall cards cost 5 to 7 mana to actually use. And now in MH they actually printed cheap ones, which is a huge deal. Because really, like, it's just so foolproof. You cast it as an aura, you target your creature, the creature gets removed, you just get the wave breaker in play. Regardless if it happened on the stack or later on. So... I don't know, I could really definitely see playing Wavebreaker in prowess, prowess decks. Like, it's not great that it's a one toughness creature by itself, but then against uh, Bowmaster decks, you just try to bestow it and not cast it. And again, it's a prowess card, so yes, it does have one toughness, but like, if you cast a spell, you can save it from a pinging effect, so... It seems way better than the other, yeah. Best so doesn't trigger prowess, right? Well, that's a good question. I assume it does, but maybe it does not. Yeah, if you enchant your Soulscar Mage, it gets double prowess. It's like... Kenra Spellseeker then. Survive. I only remember the names of the of the cards that ever existed. Like they print so many now and spell spear. Gitaxian spell stalker. It has trample ward prowess prowess. So like that would work similarly, it just has to. It does trigger prowess. It would be really nice if it did. Like I guess it is not a creature spell on the stack, right? So we're casting an enchantment, but that too will be clarified. But yeah, if you can cast it on your soul scar, then your soul scar grows and gets plus one plus one again, attacks for free, and next turn, like every mission's probably plays plus two plus two. It's also a prize creature and a non creature in one card, exactly. So, pretty nice flexibility for, for that. Again, not insane or anything, but I like the look of the Triton. It's just such a such a nice card. And now I'll take a bathroom break before I return to speak about the rest of the blue card shutters.
Can't wait for the Dreamtide Whale discussion. I did not put the Dreamtide Whale on the list of relevant cards. Do you think it is? Um... Coliseum. Deals one damage to you. Threshold, blue tap, psych. Target player draws three discards. Three. Uh, so yesterday... I was made aware of a way to win without Tassas Oracle in Nadu combo decks thanks to Cephal Coliseum, so like that's pretty minor, but like I guess a thing. I explain it here, if you don't get it, that's because the character limit made me shorten it, so it kind of doesn't make all that much sense, but trust me, you can use Cephal Colosseum and it's gonna work. You're gonna force your opponent to draw their deck. I don't know, dredge or anything, you can like do stuff like that. You can also target your opponent and shoot them with bow masters. You can probably do some stuff with it, or yeah, call them to giga mind rot them max. Uh, seems solid. That's maybe a bit high for it. It's probably like around here, but it is a land, yeah. I don't think combo Nado is good. Interaction is broken. If you draw eight cards, it turn is better. Yeah, you can play interaction in your combo. Combo deck. Then it's broken. I think. Player of Daniel. So I search through cards that you can like reasonably sacrifice to Flare of Daniel and this really is not much including these colors legal and modern. Oh <sighs> Search. Oracle, let's say dice. So there's no creature with a dice trigger. During the feed shuffle address with Coliseum, or is it for horseman situation? It's a four horseman situation. So dice doesn't exist. What about enters? Yeah, there is some options. I've seen Spy was playing Spyglass Siren in his deck yesterday. He was streaming a, a paper much with a Nadu deck and it really didn't seem too exciting and the other options are already two mana so you're probably gonna have to stick to two mana options and sacrifice Coatl, Snapcaster Mage and the other plausible card was the Calling Oracle. Maybe Archaeologist. So it's really not as free then, but it's still pretty free and it's like free on a crucial turn, which is what matters, so. Plax Manta. So it's really not a trivial cost to sacrifice a non-token blue creature, but the payoff is a free counter spell that doesn't eat up space in your hand, which actually kind of sometimes matters. Doesn't have timing restrictions. 
and doesn't have a restriction on what it can counter so it just hits hits anything so like that's it's pretty pretty rough to cast but the payoff is pretty insane I think it's a bit awkward and not trivial to play unless you work hard to enable it, but the effect, the payoff is just so, so strong and it can happen later in the game too. And importantly, it is just hard castable for free mana, cancel. You don't want to be casting that, but you can, you, will, you won't die, it's like... You know, it's better than Force of Negation to hard cast. Yeah, Narcomiba and Price Amalgam. It's a little bit of a bullshit territory. It's gonna be maybe possible with Colosseum, Flare, Gaze, Merfolk, Secret, Secret Keeper. Holy shit. This is where I am on Nadu so far. I would really want to avoid playing the shitty Spyglass Siren, like this is the Spikes deck. So, good job copy pasting that, bro, you really impressed me with your skills. Spyglass is really good actually, I'll believe that when I see, it, see that, but for now I, I doubt that statement. Like dice if Shuko dies. No, well, not really because it's a midrange deck. Hope flare, no. Hope ender. Well, I get a triggers to to flare, but it's just you know. Come on. Hope and Erkhatal is a free mana, Eldrazi, Flash, Force Spike. If people can play, can put Eldrazi Sky Spawner in their decklist unironically, then for sure they will do themselves a favor by switching it to this. That's all I have to say about, about this card. Kappa Kanonir. Kappa. Turn two four spike you and get a two two flyer seems good. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. Like not nothing groundbreaking, but potential filler monster in a blue Eldrazi deck. So yeah, the Kappa. Another affinity card. Another affinity card that doesn't solve the issue of the mana base being unplayable and an affinity card that pushes in an entirely different direction than uh, Kozilek's unsealing yet I have to imagine that like playing this on turn 3 uh, is realistic enough and people will just die to that word 4 is almost hexproof and then it's just a 5-5 five five can be blocked and it's just like kill you in two hits unblockable do i really think nadu shouldn't run thassa's oracle no well you're probably better off running oracle the wincon is fragile and like if ragavan exiles one of the 10 cards you need and it suddenly doesn't work that's it's a bit Draft. So it's just a really strong card, but it's a second affinity deck. It's like the aggro affinity deck. And again, the mana base will be the biggest issue because there's so many payoffs that we have available in affinity, but just casting it is going to be a bit rough. Now, Kappa doesn't really need you to play 
artifact lands, so maybe it can help you by letting you run a bit more islands. Could we play with the Mythic Land? The Mythic Land excels only colorless cards anyway, so it doesn't actually work. I'll give Kappa a free. Because of Fendi's Axe. But it's probably quite relevant for the aggressive versions of that deck. Aquae of Innovation. Tapped and as you control an island, and blue tap next spell you cast turn has improvised. This card is pretty weird. I don't know what are you meant to do with this. Any ideas, chat? I didn't want to just ignore it. Omniscience of blue, that's like you probably would want to improvise a spell that you can cast for fully free, so like an artifact. Or like an Ulamog. Alright, turn 2, Tamio meets the Story Circle. Turn 3. Discard 5 cards. Make 10 clues. Improvise an Ulamog. Oh. Improvise is not a super busted mechanic. I don't know, bro. I think pretty good. If improvise also this kind of colored mana, it would be okay. No, I mean, just play big colorless cards then, then you can discount them fully. Oh yeah, seems like it requires me to play Ulamog and Tamiya meets the story circle and then Yeah. It's probably unplayable, but looks pretty pretty interesting. In a way. Deep and null. For four mana. Don't, don't want to be casting that, but for 2 mana from the graveyard, sure, why not? If you are dredging, then you can like dredge harder from your graveyard. That's like what I can think of. Affinity plus Kozilek unleashing draw whole deck and use it to improvise Emrakul of 15. Holy guacamole. No fact escapes me. Why do you think you can? Specimen. The specimen, spi, 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 specimen. So yeah, I guess like it's a dredge card. Let's put it in two because it's not a particularly great dredge card. Ugin's binding. So this is like Kozilek's return, but instead of dealing damage, you bounce everything your opponent controls. Now, pretty nice if you cast it alongside some fake costed, colorless, expensive cards, so... Uh, that could be Mirror Enforcers, Null Drifter... Stuff like that. Elder Deep Fiend. 
So if you get to fake exile it from your graveyard for free in some spots it could be useful, but like also bouncing the entire board is probably not all that strong against all of the modern decks. And getting this into the graveyard is a little bit of an issue. Uh, because Eldrazi decks do not offer many ways to discard it. Hardcasting it is a little bit embarrassing, so you probably wouldn't want to do that too much, but it's an option. You could discard with Cookbook, which you would want to run in Emrakul Eldrazi, but then you really don't want to bounce your opponent's creatures when you cast your Emrakul. I guess you can stack your triggers in a way where you take their creatures and bounce everything else. So it's still potentially beneficial, but like not really like a great combo with Emrakul. Probably okay against Emrakul because it gives you all of your creatures back. It being a May is important. Yeah, of course, you can not use it. But like then, you're playing a card that doesn't do anything. <sighs> I think the Cyclonic Rift is probably not the most insane effect in Modern, but it has some potential. I'll give it free. It seems like better to me than the tier two cards, but very well might see no play. Next card is Necrogoy. Actually, it is not Nethergoy. CTM. Thank you for the sub. Nethergoy for black mana. We get a Goy. I heard some reviews of this card. One from Mengu and other from Arilax. And they both said, yeah, it's like worse than Tarmogoyf. Basically, that's what their argument amounted to. Which is like, no shit, bro, but it's a one drop, right? It's it's a one drop. It gets to be like slightly worse than a two drop and still be excellent. And I think for a one drop, it's a pretty solid one. You you know with a fetch land is a two free, so blocks Ragavan immediately. Uh, probably incentivizes you to run some Mishas Bobble type cards in your deck where you hit the extra types because. Again, the difference between Nether Goyf and Regular Goyf is that it does not count your opponent's graveyard. I guess it's a 1 2 with a fetch land. So it's a 2 3 with a fetch land and a Misha's Bubble. Worse than Shadow? Certainly it's not worse than Shadow at being cast on turn 1. So yeah, I think Nethergoyf is, is just great. Like Black has lacked a one drop monster for a long time. Can play it in Scam, can play it in Mono, Black Scam, can like play it in any variant of a Black Midrange deck, can follow it up with a discard spell. That's a good curve, can you know if you He's if you want to control player if you try you can grow it. It's gonna grow slower and you need to play Misha's Bubbles. But it's also a good a little bit of late game in your deck where it lets you uh, replay your creature later in the game, so
I think the other guy from me get, gets a just clean five wall canisters and goes to the top of the list. I think it's really strong and just a big deal for black mid-range black to be able to have a playable one drop. It just never had any and that's just a big deal. Yeah, maybe, maybe you play Nethergoyf with DRC. There are reasons not to play Ragavan in like scam or scam like decks, right? Where <clears throat> you wouldn't want to expose yourself to, to Bowmasters. You can play it in like mono black scam alongside Saga, maybe skipping Voidwalker then. There is options available. It's just one mana, bros. Next, we have Refurbished Familiar, which is a black 2-1 flying ETB opponents discards if they can't you draw. It's kind of a popper card, but it just seems overall pretty solid. So, just looks neat. You probably won't see much play in modern, but like it wouldn't be other other like it wouldn't be too out of the ordinary to put a card like this in a modern affinity deck if you run black mana I think and like familiar and like blood fountain start something yeah it's a decent prop might so like nothing too special and not groundbreaking, but I think it was worth mentioning. With this and the fellow monster type card, what's the fellow monster? Hero monster. Yeah, sounds good. Right, Phyrex and Tower without uh, beating the horse, as they say. I'll put it in the 5 out of 5 wall canisters tier because it just seems really strong and I'm pretty surprised by the fact they reprinted it. I didn't ex quite expect it, but here we are. Uh, it seems like an improvement to. Yogma, first and foremost, like you probably would appreciate being able to sacrifice your young wolf for a double mana jump, play your Yogma a turn ahead, doesn't sound too shabby. But there's plenty of other ways in which you can spend uh, extra black black. So, you know, fast mana can be, of course, broken easily. There is a combo which I think might actually be pretty relevant. I tried to like build a deck around this. Actually I have this deck. Is this this one? Yeah. I have this deck built right here for my Hararuya Wayfinder request. And it's, I just tried to build a sacrifice deck with like the War and Soul Trader combo and just all goes together so well with Phyrex and Tower. So, if you have Warren Soul Trader and a Grave Crawler, you know, this is a zombie, so you just get to recast your Grave Crawler over and over. So if you have a, some way to benefit from the Gravecrawler entering or leaving the battlefield, such as like classically it would be Blood Artist, but if you don't want to play a bad card like Blood Artist, which 
Pladars arguably is with its O1 stats, you could run the new monster, which, which seems like pretty relevant for a sacrifice theme Fire X and Tower deck, Marionette Apprentice. And just drain your opponent, so that seems quite playable. The combo is not a fully infinite combo with just Marionette Apprentice. You do need to pay life with War and Soul Trader, but since you make a treasure and you sacrifice a grave crawler, that means that Marionette Apprentice, which triggers on either an artifact or creature, triggers twice per every iteration of the loop, which is like the Geralt Messenger combo that used to be present in Yogmov. I guess it's not present anymore, so maybe that's like a sign to sign of the fact that like you can't rely on that too much, but like you could you could run Blood Artist too if you find it relevant. I just thought Marionette Apprentice seems better because it's two bodies, two toughness. Also works better with like a natural draw of War and Soul Trader. Or you have some treasures laying around and it's like it's just burn that you can direct at your opponent. And on top of that, like I also managed to fit like Ponyan Nightmare, Grief, Flare of Malice, Malachi Rebirth to Scam Grief. Maybe you could play like the regular version of the trick, doesn't matter. And some random red cards splashed, which Kalang Discharge. So you have removal. And you just have an infinite combo. And it, it should it does look like you should be able to nickel and dime your opponent a good amount. And Firex and Tower makes your draws past that. What else? Uh, just just seems like there's a lot of potential. Maybe you don't even need to play black, red, excuse me, or green in a deck like this, and you can play Spy Master's Vault, the black land of the cycle, which is then black tap, target creature you control, connives X, where X is the number of creatures that die this turn. So you can just play, you know, return blood guest, sacrifice it to tower, play sacrifice something else somehow and then like connive too well it all, all sounds pretty good also the combo is fully foundable with a splice lively dirge holy shit that's a good point so this seems like a really good base for a deck to me and i was able to fit removal and interaction in it grief Thonian Nightmare, also a member of that family, where you get to use it to scam grief too. Especially if you run it alongside some other sources of energy, so Discharge. Calvining Discharge, yeah, that, that works. For second minor, it's like 5th to 8th copies of Gravecrawler. If you feel like you need that, I guess it doesn't work with the Marionette Apprentice, though, because that one doesn't target. So, you know, if your turn one is like Evoke Grief and Galvanic Discharge your opponent's Ragavan, then it's very realistic to just turn to. Well, you need a creature for the Nightmare. It's not very realistic, but it's slightly realistic to reanimate Grief with like a simple line of going Stitches Supplier. Fire X and Tower, sacrifice the supplier, mill over a blood gas, play tower, return blood gas, play nightmare, sacrifice the blood gas, get a grief. That's pretty convoluted, but yeah. So 
it all interlocks and works pretty well and I find it's it's pretty cool. You can also play the Spike Raptor. That's a little bit of a different angle. So you, I don't think you necessarily need to. And I don't know if I would be particularly excited about playing the Amp Raptor, but maybe. A question that you need to answer is, well, am I happy if this flaps flips over a platgast? So then you either like you probably realize that you're not, so you either don't play Raptor or you don't play Bloodgast. Type cards and I just really appreciate like Bloodgast with Ferex and Tower, but we'll see if that how that plays off. Don't you need four energies to bring back grief though? You do, yeah. So, a lot of options available, and you have an infinite combo, a finite combo, just a lot of stuff. So, you're gonna rate all of those cards at once. And, like, this is only the tip of the iceberg of what the Firexon Tower can do. I've mentioned Yogg, and, like, there's probably many, many other decks, but Stitcher, Supplier, Stonks go, go up. Yes, Apprentice here, Warden here for being a combo card, Nightmare I think just up there. Also put for Fulminator Mages in the sideboard of this deck, that seems just really vicious with the Nightmare. Being able to Fulminator Mage and Nightmare, a Fulminator Mage every turn with a recursive creature. It's just a really good sideboard plan against... Uh, the lens decks, except for if you get the Relict of Progenitus, but, you know. So, I'm curious about an archetype like this. Flare of Malice seems pretty, pretty strong, too. The upside of Flare of Malice is that, unlike the other flares, you actually do have black creatures that are worth sacrificing. How many towers do I think? My first build has three. Seems like a reasonable amount. So a flood of malice, like you actually can sacrifice blood gas or stuff like this to, to get a good benefit. The effect is much worse than the blue flare. But it's potentially a good answer to Merktide. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure Scam is going to be happy to play Flare of Malice. It works well with the Scam spells. I'm pretty sure Scam is going to be happy playing Firex and Tower 2. Just another way to benefit from a turn 1 Grief, going turn 1 Grief into Voidwalker immediately. That just speeds you up a pretty good amount, so... Good stuff all around, pretty impressed by the power of those. Spymaster's Vault, you mentioned it, it's pretty, probably pretty hard to justify playing, but like, might be powerful in a deck like this, I'll try it. Tower doesn't cost 10 to Duffy, yeah, because it's already in play. You already played it on turn 1. It's a little bit of an issue, I guess, that's true. It's not to be underestimated. Feldy Profane, not much to say about this card, just good black land, 4 mana removal on a black untapped land, Pfft, solid. Will I be part of the MH3 streamer event? I don't think I will, at least no one has invited me in. Bogart Troller, also fine card. It's weird that like it's a Bojuka Bog Goblin on a non-Bojuka Bog land, but here we are. 
playable when you need to belcher people. Off your monster. Off your monster is probably. Is off your monster just absolutely unplayable? I think it is. Or does it have some like minimal minute? I think it's absolutely unplayable. Consuming corruption, instant for every swamp, X damage you gain X life. Uh, wow, absolutely incredible. I have a gut wrenching reaction whenever I see people play March of Wretched Sorrow in the format of modern. So I guess like this miss may be better in coffers or something. Like it scales pretty nice into well into the late game. I guess it doesn't give you a, a benefit from your coffers mana as much, but He's a phenomenal you know, control player. Pretty whatever, you got less. March is much better with Necro Dominance for sure. Sure, buddies. This card just looked interesting to me. I don't know what to think of it. Crabomination, emerge from Artifact 7. ETB opponent exiles top card, card from hand, and a random card from the graveyard. No, actually, it's a random card from their hand, too. Anyway, cast a spell exiled from among those, but like it's emerged from artifact, so you want to cast it with a frogmite or the refurbished familiar. This is the black affinity payoff, but it's also black black, which probably means that even in affinity it's uncastable. It's also not a not an artifact itself. Mm, that's a bit rough. There's so many... Like, the payoff is unclear. It's unclear if this card is good. Enough to, like, work, but... To, to do all the work for it. But the cost probably kills it. Yeah, it's probably a one. It just looked cool. Maybe it's a Keg Double card. Yeah, it's a Keg Double card because it also has a pun name. Crabomination, bros. I just can't hold myself. Necrodominance. Did you guys catch that it's actually Croxa? Necrodominating in the picture? I was wondering what's up with the person in the... Artwork, but I think it is Croxa. It has a face mouth and a belly mouth. Now, Croxa was actually always slim, just the perspective makes it look like. It's a fat guy. That's why we... Well, actually, I don't know. Here, the belly is pretty... significant. Alright, Necrodominance. Broken or unplayable? Discuss. Broco, Basset, Dog shit, Broken AF. Hmm. It's pretty weird. It's like, it's literally just Necropotence and they just printed it into Modern and... It's 
literally functionally just necropotence with like less stupid wording. And I guess the downside being that you can't play the anime one. That's a pretty big deal when it comes to my interest in building decks around that. Piffin Needle doesn't stop it. Holy shit. So, I think this will be good alongside... Live game? So you want to play it alongside what, Joldred? I was thinking if I can play Necrodominance alongside Martyr of Sands. Because you know, you get like a big hand, you reveal all those white cards and you have a shit ton of life. Oh, it's kinda cool, but then also you have a black 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 card in your mono white deck, so that part doesn't excite me all that well. Children of Corliss. Filter lands, yeah, maybe. Gain okay, life with the life you've lost is 10. Display the one ring. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking about too. It's kind of a little bit easier maybe to just play the one ring and you get a similar effect to Necrodominance. So, it's pretty close competition. You don't need to add bad cards to make good cards better. Well, but is it a good card? But in, in absence of anything else, it's not clear to me. Yeah, one ring has been proven not to work well with grief in grief decks. It's too expensive to cast, which might change a little bit with. Pyrex and Towers introduction. It's easier to cast ring in a grief deck now. You could just like turn free evoke grief, sacrifice it to tower, or like just turn free tower, sack your orcish bowmaster token. So you could do like something like that, that's comparable. Tower Sack Grief Scammed and Cast Necro Turn 3 sounds great. Tower Sack Grief Scammed? How do you scam it? Like Grief Scam and then Sack it to Necro Dominance? To just mean to fully sacrifice it? Yeah, fine. Yeah, I think Necrodominus is powerful, just you need to put life gain cards in your deck. If you don't, like, please don't play it alongside Death Shadow. That's a really bad idea. You really want to play it alongside life gain and not alongside Death Shadow. Because you might think it's good good alongside Death Shadow because you can pay life and make your shadow big, but like you'll just lock yourself with no cards available. Will Baron be good again with Necro Dominance in the meta? Maybe in game one, but then post portal board it out and you'll die. Cool with Omnath, yeah. Nice, classic Omnath black 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 card. Toxic Deluge. Three mana sweeper, pretty minor, can kill anything but costs life. Doesn't seem particularly relevant, like it's fine, it's whatever. No big deal. I 
I think it was played in Legacy because of True Name Nemesis, or am I imagining things? Victimize. Reanimate two monsters. By sacrificing a creature. It's always... It's hard enough to reanimate monsters without having to sacrifice a creature. And... Mm, I'm not particularly looking forward to having to jump, jump through an extra hoop to get two monsters reanimated. Reanimating one big one should be pretty solid. It fizzles if they kill your creature. Well, it fizzles if they kill all of your creatures because it's sacrifice a creature, it's not sacrifice target creature. It's a combo card, not a value reanimation card. Alright, so you want to victimize Soul Trader and and the Marionette Master guy. I can and like sacrifice a blood gas, I can get behind that, yeah. Or like Kiki Jiki, fair. I'll give it a two. Buried alive. I don't think you'll realistically play it too much in modern, but it's pretty cool to exist. You can bury the wise, uh, bury the life some bullshit or like phoenixes or amalgams and narcomiba to get back stuff immediately or unburial rights and archon and like deep analysis. I don't know, stuff like that. This type of a thing. Buried Alive is the only creature's body. Buried Alive goes to one. Emperor of Bonus. Beginning of combat of, on your turn, exile one target card from a graveyard. So this is a graveyard hate card. Two mana adapt two. Whenever a counter is put on Emperor of Boners, put a creature card exile with it. With finality counter on it, it gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, so it actually gets exiled because it has a finality counter. Oh, we can put the Ors of Tutu in the grave. All right. Buried Alive moves up to 2. So what if we play Emperor of Bones and... Gata Soul Cauldron? And then we have 8 ways to reanimate Grizzlebrand. And this puts counters on the on the guy to like return your grizzle brand actually. It's a bit awkward that you need to wait, exile something for real and then get it back. Paying a two mana two two only to wait and then try to pay two mana to adapt to is a bit uh Gata reanimates Grizzle on her own. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get eight effects. Redundancy. Cauldron in your zombie deck. Ooh, that's interesting. What abilities do we have? War and Soul Trader, that's it. Well, maybe you'd want something extra before you play Cauldron, but... Yeah. Name Devil. Name Devil probably is not gonna survive it. Mm, 
Now, one thing that Emperor of Bones does is that it does not discriminate. So previously we had that Persist slash Gorayos Vengeance split and you did either Legendary or non-Legendary and your reanimation plan sucked anyway, so it can serve as a backup. But it's also pretty similar in that role to... Priest of, I want to say, Fair Rights, which is not a particularly desirable card in practice, being a creature that can just die. Fulminator is a good color on ability. Holy shit, Fulminator of Bloodgast. I'll give it to, doesn't seem too likely to work out. Sorin Markov. Markov, not Markov. Now, holy shit, I am so... not liking this normal art of the card. It looks so much worse than the handsome Sorin. So if I play Sorin of House Markov, I'll try not to play this one and, and I'll stick to the handsome one. Sorin with Heliot Spike Feeder. Well, let's read it. Lifeling Exdort. 1 4, not to die to Lightning Bolt. Post combat, if you gain 3 or more life this turn, exile Zorin. Then return him to the battlefield transformed. And we get a planeswalker with Exdort. Plus two, create a food token, so literally Oko. <sighs> Deals damage equal to the amount of life gain this turn to any target. Minus one, holy shit, this with... Martyr of Sands, it's just so much damage. Holy shit, a Neoform Wincon, that's true. Once you Neoform a Grizzle Brand, you can play two Mox Ambers. Play Sorin, move to combat, flip Sorin, and deal damage to your opponent for however much life you've gained with your shoals. It's fantastic. I, I don't know if it's fantastic, but it does make it so that you play three blood, blood, three blood cards, two Moxen and a Sorin, and you're mostly good. Then minus six gain control. Why, why are all of those Planeswalkers plus two? That's crazy. It's just gonna be impossible to kill in combat. Asmo card, yeah. Okay, well... It lets you assemble even more useless food tokens in Asmo. I don't think it actually does much <laughs> there. Or Victim is an Archon plus Sorin that flips. Holy fuck, can you get a Sorin? That's crazy. They transform and step. No, this transforms beginning of your post combat main phase. Nice reading skills, my friend. So gain control becomes a vampire, put a lifelink counter. Maybe white pyramid other than the creature or Sorin. Wow. This wins if you spike feeder plus Heliod. Finally, a way to win after I spike feeder and Heliod. No more gentlemen's agreements. It seems overall like solid, right? But you need a 
sort of a life gain theme in your deck, which could be possible in a in a prayers deck with perhaps the guide of souls or whatnot, then you like gain life with flips and like you kill stuff like that. Does it deserve a 4 though? Is it on the level of the cards in the War Volcanicers bracket? Live game theme in your Necro deck, yeah. Alright, you convinced me. I like Soren, I just don't know what to say about it. It's not a card that will build my decks around, but I will play against it, I think. The choking on a food cost starting to become a plain soccer. You see, front side is a human and he's a vampire afterwards. He was converted to a vampire somehow, but I don't know why. Is the Neoform Wincon? Holy shit, it's the tenth person to mention that. Now I feel enlightened. Well, it doesn't say vampire on the back, it says neonate in the name, which is a word for a vampire in the magic universe. Power balance. Point cast a spell, reveal the top card. If you do, you may cast without paying its mana cost if the two spells have the same mana value. Is it good? I'll put it in the keg. Mm, it's a bit less toxic than... It's the red counterbalance. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a bit less toxic than counterbalance because... It's just more friendly for both players. We both get value. It's not that no one does. Flat of duplication. Free mana. Sacrifice a creature to copy an instant or sorcery spell. It's pretty hard for me to give a one. Whoa, canister rating to a free card. But. Flare of Dupa. <laughs> the Red Counter spell? Sure, buddy. But yeah, it's a pretty weird effect to try to benefit from. Maybe in combo decks? But like, what combo decks are gonna have non-token red creatures ready to sacrifice laying around? I guess there is, is potential for a storm deck with Ral, Monsoon Mage, and then if you have extra Ral's you can sacrifice them, but then you can also just flip them. I think it's most likely irrelevant, I give it to... Copy living end, holy guacamole. Isn't Dra legendary? He is, yeah. That's why you like flip it, use it, play another one, flip it, use it. No, I guess I put the white one on one, yeah, we can put the flare on one. Already did that. Oh, Detectives Phoenix. For free mana, we get a Flying Haste to do. Once again, bestow. And it just bestows for one mana and collect evidence six from the graveyard. Wow, holy guacamole. Imagine enchanting a Hollow one type card with it that would just be insane. Six is a lot, it's not a lot. 
it's collect evidence a lot. Like it's collect evidence six. It's not like XL six card too. You just need two cards that have a cost. Well, I guess maybe more because you gonna play one drops in your deck, but provided your your deck has like something that costs more than one, you can just exile like two or three cards and get there. Yeah, like street drive, this type of a card. It's okay, but two two hey, two two isn't that great these days. Yeah, I don't have an idea for a home for this, but maybe dredge or whatnot. It does not trigger Vengevine, it's not a creature spell. So I like the look of the Phoenix, but it might just not find a home or not end up being playable anywhere. You know, Hall 1 used to be a modern deck many years ago. I think it would be incredible in a in the Hollow One deck, but you know that deck doesn't exist for years. Looting is banned. Format has moved on. It's like it, it would be a really bad strategy without even with Faithless Looting too. So yeah, okay. It's gonna. It's only fair to like put it down there. I just like it. Random green cards in my red section. Ghostflyer slays. Like I, it's probably not playable, but the upside is pretty high. Like if you're playing as a zoo deck, it's just a four mana. It's just a one mana deal four, deal four any anywhere, instant. That's pretty solid rate. Oh yeah, the Psychic Frog. Psychic Frog is a card I want to put a Phoenix on. I think that's a like good combination, but it's a pretty weird mana requirement already. <laughs> yeah, 4 is also exactly enough not to kill Kavu, which is like giga awkward. Most of the time you're not going to be playing as a Zo too. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Arena of Glory. So this land is a pretty disappointing member of the cycle. Mono red, except to give a creature spell haste. And red, red, pretty awkward way to do that. Anything cool we can do with that? Because nothing comes to my mind. Good red creatures already have haste. Holy shit, that's true. Alright, let's think of a red creature that doesn't have haste. I have one, PN Kiran Nalar. Doesn't sound too hot. Plage. Oh, that's nice. That's a good one. Okay, we have a use. We use it on Flash, the Boros Titan. Dreadhold Arcanist. Roxa, yeah, that sounds not too bad, but it's a land. In some scenarios, it's going to have a low opportunity cost, and it, maybe it's going to enable something cool. Galvanic discharge, the energy removal spell.
Yeah, Excel sucks. Mm. You know, slightly better than Lightning Ball if you don't care about going Haze. Slightly different than Unholy Heat. Probably like a tiny bit worse and it's probably easier to just play Unholy Heat and deal the sick amount of 6 damage that you can just deal with that card consistently. But... If you, for some reason, want to lean into energy like my Sacrifice deck did with Ktonian, Ktonian uh, Nightmare, that's a way to introduce some surplus energy into your deck, so... Seems good. Maybe even like a 4, it's... Well, a 3 at least. Maybe even a 4. Ah, oh, free seems proper. In playtesting, this targeting your own dudes to ritual energy for another out was impactful. I can see that. Frogman Enforcer. Frogman Enforcer, honestly, maybe it's just a scam card because there's so many of those cards I keep talking about, the potential synergies with mid Enforcers, and it never materializes because the mid Enforcers actually just suck ass and they like keep printing new ones that are slightly different, slightly better in some irrelevant ways. just but this one is better than the actual enforcer a tiny bit it references frogmite so it's like frog mir enforcer frogmite but like yeah if you try it it's available Paral Monsoon. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Human Wizard. Nice typings. When you cast instant or sorcery spell during your turn, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, you take one damage. If you win the flip, you may flip Paral. That's nice. So it's like a Baral, but also just deals damage to you. How, how big of a downside is that? If you win the flip, you flip. Holy shit. Ral enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on him for each instant and sorcery spell you have cast this turn. Why would we want our barrel to damage us half the time? Well, now you flip it and then it doesn't. Like on average, you take half the damage from Ral. I take more, but. You don't take much, right, before you win a flip. If we are storming. And if it flips, you lose the discount, but then you can plus one to regain the discount until your next turn instant and sorcery spells cast cost one less. The totally relevant storm deck. See, you weren't there at the beginning of the stream, but that's what this set is doing, right? It bringing new decks back from the dead. And, well, the Storm deck was bad now because it didn't have Raleigh and didn't have the Ruby Medallion, right? So, 
So if you've cast six spells, you cast the ultimate, which is like draw eight. So it's a barrel that can also help you go further. Two damage divided as you choose among one or two penalmen's drake have you control the barrel other than draw. So like Ral enters with at least free loyalty. I think if you aren't mind desire with this, it's bad. Mind desire. I mean it's a red card, you don't even need the blue cards. You can just use red cards, I think, but we'll see. I Guess I'm not giga excited about this. Like Ruby Medallion is the same thing. I put the medallions together. Because it's all all the same card, like Ruby, Sapphire, Dice to Doomblade, holy shit. I mean if you aren't getting for old it's meh. Well, you are. No, Oski means... Off it's Oski. It's off a given place. That's what it means, kind of. Without paying their mana costs, holy guacamole. I didn't, didn't read that it's without paying their mana costs. Holy shit. I thought it's just like you can play your top 8 cards. But yeah, like if you... That's just... That's... It's really good barrel, like it's a win comp by itself. I mean, I, I'll be interested in trying out the Red Storm deck. The medallions may be useful in some other context. Any ideas? The joke is you're trying to get to 6 plus and win your coin flips, yeah. Yeah, but you can also like... If you have two bar if you have two rows, you can flip like the first one. You can plus it to keep the discount and play the second one once you've played some spells and then you know. I think it has a meaningful upside. Like the first one, if you don't like if you can take the damage, you can risk it. If you don't, if you can't take the damage, just flip it at the first opportunity and plus it. You need to cast six spells previously. Just cast mana more for those rituals, draw spells. It's enough to make Storm worth trying. That's my stance for now. I'll put Trial in free. Free Walk Canisters. That Glimpse the Unthinkable was also... Kurva no jak is Glimpse, no? Impossible. Oh... 
sapphire into an urza pile maybe yeah perhaps glimpse the impossible is just impulse draw free that seems good with Raul, right that's just red card draw it's card, card draw that doesn't bowmaster and then like you can make some silence sure only this turn though but yeah i mean it's, it's a draw free i'll put it just right next to Real Ruby Medallion and Glimpse the Impossible. Um, Traptor goes into one out of five because just I really don't see it being any good. Meltdown is a sideboard card, it's a fine sideboard card. I don't even think it's gonna be played all that widely, like why would it be? But it can be annoying to face sometimes. Eldrazi line breaker. Kind of hate that they made like color the Eldrazi's again. Because Eldrazi like the color the colored mana on those just makes actually leaning into your ancient tombs so hard and building a proper deck that benefits from Eldrazi Temple so hard and this is kind of like a, it's like a good card but an aggro card it's just really hard to put it together but sure Meltdown will be finally the end for Lantern it will yeah also Tamio Tamio just attacks through Brigade and makes a clue every turn way too tough Linebreaker is nuts though, it's a flip Stormseeker. Yeah, a Pioneer card. So it's like, yeah, it's like a good... It's not even good, it's, it's a fringe Pioneer card, but an Eldrazi. I'll give it 2 out of 5, it's probably gonna see some minor play. But I don't care for it at all. Tough to make Labyrinth aggro build. Yeah, I've seen those lists that people post with the free to haste. How do you call it? The free to haste prototype. Blitz automaton. Like I've seen a list posted with this unironically and uh this to exile it to Yogan's Labyrinth to cast this. Like, your opponent just taps a red for a bolt and you're even. You didn't even gain a, an advantage. You, like, played all of those cards to power out a modern level 2 drop. Yeah, it's rough. Barbarian Ring, is it relevant? Now Barbarian Ring made me look up Odyssey cards and wonder what were the other members of the cycle because I knew the black one, the red one and the blue one. But I didn't know what's the green one and the white one and if you didn't, if you haven't seen them you're up for a three chat center garden sacrifice certain garden threshold target she gets plus three plus three until end of turn what a banger not only that but the white one was my favorite nomad stadium add white to your mana pool nomad stadium deals deals one damage to you threshold white tap sack gain for life It deals the damage to you at first, so you jury is just regain. He's a phenomenal Barbarian ring. Player. Like Hello, fine. are the assigned numbers the equivalent of Kenny Walk? Probably it's like an M Hayashi. 
Ähm, Hayashi Guards. Lelia. Lelia still combos with Cascade. The problem is that they banned Cascade. Kills pro red creatures. Oh yeah, Barbarian Ring against Sanctifier on VEC. Good solution. Five walk for Harbinger, Sorin, Necrogoyf, Tower, and Kponian Nightmare. Well, Nightmare probably doesn't deserve it, but... I'll move it down. Uh, did I say sorry? I meant Goyf. Tamio? I don't know what I said, but... Last red card is Party Trasher. Kurwa, no nie ma takiej karty, no. Nie może im poszukać jak literówkę zrobię, nie? Thrasher, Thrasher. This card, this looks like a War of the Spark card. They printed, they had a Convoke theme in blue red and the cards were kind of weird. And it's just non creature spells have Convoke. You discard to exile top two of your library then choose one of them i don't understand this at all it seems supposed to be a constructed card because they want for it to survive bold but it's a new capenna can card Maybe it's a storm card too, I don't get this one. Card like Inti, I'll give it a 2 out of 5 because it seems not fully unplayable. But thinking about this card brings me no pleasure, it's only pain, so I'll leave it for... Maybe I should leave it unrated. Maybe it belongs in Kek because of that. Because sometimes, sometimes there are those cards where I just read them and I am like, yeah, this looks like it's supposed to do something, but I really don't care to try to figure that out. Like I, I really have zero desire to try to figure out what is the secret thing I'm supposed to do with Party Trasher because it's just such an awkward combination of abilities. Oh, people ask me about new cards for Amulet. Disciple of Freya Lisa. That is indeed an Amulet card. Allegedly. Although new cards make me want to play four basic lands or something so i don't know if i'll even even fit it and the joke is that you can pack for for disciple and you have a land you could have done that before like amulet actually takes top lands better than an average deck right um uh, hedron Tangled Florahedron, yeah, that existed and like was as whatever, right? I searched through results of that card, there was literally zero. So I don't think Disciple of Realis is really like all that big of a deal. For the free free mama, also more. I looked for the Mammoth 2 and Amulet, it was zero. It was played a little bit in the green-white Titan deck, but that was a different deck. And this, like, yeah, is untapped, but I don't 
No, Raven Carol. I am not particularly interested in that. And like, I think what Amulet really needs is to decrease the reliance on Sounder Spark rather than lean harder into it. That's my two cents. So I'm not as excited about this card as like I've seen other Amulet people be. I'll give it three out of five still because I probably will play it. EDH card, holy shit, thank you for your insight. Wirewood Symbiote. Oh, they keep trying to make the elves happen, but like five years late. It's too late, buddies. Should have printed this in MH1, maybe then it would have been okay. Priest of Titania goes into the same slot immediately six i've seen a mono green ramp deck that spike played yesterday with six and he stormed off with misha's bubble being recast from his graveyard and then he played a reservoir and dealt 1000 damage that seemed not, not the worst, it's probably not an amulet card, but it's a little bit of a free mana nothing, but if, she, if it survives, then how did he get so many lands in hand? I don't know, I think he had a ring. <clears throat> what well, six? I'll give three to six. I think it's not a big deal, but not a terrible card. <clears throat> Bubble loops all of your lands. Well, yeah, you just need a lot of the lands, right? Collective resistance is a wear tear in mono green. It's like, I guess you have Fossil Vigor in Mono Green, but it's just another option. Maybe if you can't pitch it too easily. Fanatic of Ronas. Fanatic of Ronas is a fucked up amount of mana. Taps to add 4, but how do you control a 4 powered creature? I don't know. Any ideas? Scammed Grief, maybe. Omnath. Rhino. You enteralize them. A free free fairy with a candle from Cauldron. Holy shit. I think it's like, in all on it, like it's just such a big amount of mana. Like, you know, you play it on turn two, and then if a four power creature magically materializes on your battlefield you just play a primal titan and you know i enjoy a primal titan but i don't think the creature will magically materialize so it's probably just like funny to look at and irrelevant sylvan safekeeper that's like put it alongside nadu because that's where it's gonna be relevant nantuka two Thief of Existence. No creature, no long permanent. So you could play Thief of Existence in Eldrazi. If you play Prismatic Vista, Wastes, and Forest, you can have an out to Blood Moon on your Eldrazi. That can also be an interactive spell. Well, if it exile creatures, I'll be very not green. I'll give it a free. It's like not f again. It's a colored Eldrazi, but I think making Eldrazi a green deck 
leans better into supporting Emrako, which is gonna be important. Oh, where do you get the sea from? From your waist. As I said, you play Prismatic Vista, Waste and Forest. So Miko Spawn is also... It has Kicker, so you get to use your extra Eldrazi Temple mana. You get to search your Waste, Saga... More Temples, whatever. I kind of like the look of it if you're playing a deck that's trying to play Emrakul. So when you cast, you get a land. That's just always the case. Yeah, because when I tr when I thought about Eldrazi decks, like the biggest issue with Eldrazi and with trying to build an Emrakul deck, because Emrakul is busted, but it doesn't have it's this the support is not quite there. It feels like to make it like resilient. It's just fighting through Moon and sowing Miko spawn seems to help through. seems to help casting things through moon and with there existing a blue moon now that seems important four feels like a lot for the card but I'll give it four it's thinking about it it impressed me we'll see about play <sighs> birthing ritual. The word birthing is so funny. It just I just think of John Star when I hear the word. John Star used to have some birthing sayings. Uh, beginning of this is a mythic. Oh, it's a surely good. Born a goblin. No, that I was not even right. Born the Goblin. If you control a creature, look at the top seven, then you may sacrifice to blah 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 blah. So it's cool. Like, you know what? It goes alongside Party Thrasher for me because it's again a type of a card that I really have no desire to think about. It's not bad by any means, I just don't care. Corvegdal. This is the same. I just don't get what it does. But I think the mo most of the things that it does is that it is a free mana free free that you need to untap with and yeah. Core target for Jogmoth? Why? Oh, because it just casts creatures first from the top of your library. Just as that. Shifting Woodlands. People are trying to build combo decks around it. reanimating omniscience and it does seem pretty good they land as your main combo pieces it's not the easiest to interact with so shifting woodland a lot of tuning remains to be performed but it just seems really impressive to me I'll say solid for I've been impressed by what I've seen so far.
Marvel and Rumble seems like a good way to enable the shifting woodlands tag actually. You reveal a top four, put a permanent into your hand, rest into your graveyard, create a scion. Does it get the Titan, etc. if it turns I to a Titan copy? Question mark. Very good question. In Titan, it's pretty impossible to get Delirium and to have a Titan in your graveyard. You need to play a deck that works on those two aspects, having a graveyard that's sizable, so... There's also been posts on the Amulet Titan Discord where people were saying they will cut Explore for Malvol and Rumble, and I just am so emotionally attached to Explore, and I think people just can't understand how good that card is. But outside of Titan, if you actually want to fuel your graveyard, Malvol and Marvel and Rumble is just very decent. I'm gonna give it a free. Trickster's Elk. It's a free mana, free free. And it bestows and makes it into it makes the target into a free free. Wait, is that one dead? It's a funny joke because it's like awkward, right? So I had a rules question because I wasn't actually sure if I bestow this on a Magus of the Moon or the blue Magus of the Moon, does it actually stop it or does it not? Because I think the layers might actually work weirdly here and just make it so that it's irrelevant and my lands are still mountains or islands or both nope holy shit wouldn't it be the same situation as dress down bro do you think i ever dress down the magus i don't know what happens Then it goes to Keg W. I thought it's better. Primal prayers. So primal prayers, if somehow you loop they sound good. If you benefit from flashing your monsters, that also sounds good. But you have to remember that baseline, this card is paying 4 mana and like nothing happens. You still need to keep casting creature spells. So... There is a cost to playing this card and it's not like super giga great. You are playing a 4 mana, do nothing and then like it has to turn into something. So it does turn into an infinite loop with Guide of the Souls and some other tools. And I think a deck like this can have a good amount of potential but... It's not free and doesn't fit everywhere, everywhere. And yeah, we mentioned the energy elephant, like Heliot, those type of things, Nadu. Let's give it four. It's a little bit of a, of a stretch, but I think it fits there. Like with the Guide of the Souls, the deck is likely gonna be nice. Do I want to kill with Acererak on Modo? Holy shit, Acererak works too, yeah. I really want to. Do that one time and then uninstall the deck. Is one energy instead of CMC? No, no, it's just one energy of instead of 
paying anything. So like you, one energy per creature. Greased Voracius Larvae. We got a 1 2 death touch, crucial second point of toughness to make the card playable instead of not playable. And Greece transforms if you return a young wolf and pay a green. Otherwise, if like anything else entered from your graveyard, anything else comes to mind, I think it's mainly high. just... Uh, a Yogg of Cards. You just come and grieve, sure. Blood gas, sure. And on the back side, you get another Greased Planeswalker, which is again pluses up to four loyalty. He's a phenomenal. So it doesn't die to bold, makes insects, which Bjorgmov appreciates. Pockets. Makes death touch insects, which are good in combat. Occasionally, destroys curse totem and other hate pieces. And then minus six is to do some bullshit. Overall, like you know, a it's pretty similar to Greased, the actual Greased. Like it's just almost the same card, it's plus one to mill, minus two to kill, it's just like pluses slightly differently and kills slightly different and minus six to... It's just the same card, bros. And you're gonna play... Greasts in your Greased the Hunger type deck, so you're actually gonna mill insects now. Can you identify where Greased is on the backside art? Greased, I don't know, it's somewhere in the thing. But it's a swarm and like it's a one bug that, one insect that leads the swarm. The Mantis hands are actually fake, it's not Greased. So I, Grease just seems like a slum, slum dunk in the Yogmoth. I give it a 4. Should I give it a 5? I'm gonna give it a 4. I think it's... Right below those. This is Grease. It's mostly enchantment artifact hey no it's just mostly planeswalker that for one and a half mana just makes more tokens which is what yogmoth wants to be doing just making the tokens player of cultivation so i tried to look through ways to enable that When are you flipping it though? No, jak kurwa wilk ci wraca z grobu, nie? Ja pierdolę, się pytasz głupio. And I looked through playable cards that you can sacrifice to flare. It's actually just impossible. And having enough basics in your deck to support cultivate, that's also just impossible. I think the card is just pretty stinky actually and it's pretty impossible to... to f support it.
There is a 2 1 that's rampant growth when it dies. There's also an 0 3 that does that, but like those are not really good cards. Neither is Arboreal Grazer. Turn 1 fetch, Dread Arbor and Sack. And what have you achieved then? If you fetch Dread Arbor and Sack it, what have you achieved, chat? Think. You have assembled playing a tapped basic land on turn 1 and having a basic land in your hand where it previously was a flare. Even if you suck a grazer, it's not actually that good, right? Because you... Like you spend a glazer, grazer and a flare and you combine them into an extra land into play so it's like a it's a basic so it's like a mana dork that cannot be killed by removal but you had to like assemble this specific combo to it a widziałem twita mangusty z ugie escape shiftem no nie widziałem akurat Lord draws a land though. Well, flare changes into a land, like you like spend net zero cards, yeah. It's, the, it's two uncoolable mana dogs. Oh, I have three lands in play. That's better than I what I thought. Somehow I imagined I have two lands in play after that, but I have three lands in play because I put a land into play with Grazer and then I sacrifice Flare and I put the Fever into play. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Still, I think to actually play Flare you need to have 10,000 basics in your deck and you actually won't need to be happy to play Cultivate for free mana. It's Titan Scam, right? Well, in Titan is impossible to have basics and like you just like would need to... You can't cast a card for green green. It's impossible to fit into amulet as is and like it doesn't really work with amulet so it seems pretty impossible to weave into an amulet deck to me oh i pitch extra cultivates to endurance and suck the endurance for under cultivate that's crazy although impossible given that flare is a sorcery Dryad doesn't seem too bad to suck to flare as well. Seems pretty bad to me. I'll give it to I think it can just see no play. And like really like I tried to put a deck together that makes sense, oh, I failed. Maybe others are are gonna succeed but I can't cranial ram this card is funny because of popper and they just bound a card that's better than it and just printed it that's all I have to say this card is yet another mid enforcer but this time it's also two colored so it's giga impossible to actually play in modern and it's like ragdos which it's unplayable can be good in asmo in that case one is the proper rating Psychic Froggers, anyone has found any place, any home for Psychic Frog? Hmm. 
been holy shit that's very not optimistic 2014 holy shit bros i have not thought about like this much but imagine you discard a detective phoenix and then you put detective phoenix on psychic frog you hit your opponent so hard and your mana base gets wrecked by your opponent's maguses of two different colors yeah discard grizzlebrand and then Gorios. Mm -hmm. yeah that seems like a fine discard outlet in Gorios. Seems like a pretty solid two drop cauldron. Mm-hmm. Discard Wonder. Holy shit. Patches to Grief and Fawn. Discard Grizzle and Cauldron. I'll give the frogs there for I think it's just really strong, but I didn't put together anything where it would be played, but it's not a card that I like build decks around typically. But it's just it's just nice. Oh Inadu, as I said, I will have a, an article on Hariruya.com. I'll give it five out of five. I think it's pretty insane. And the combo or like less combo but pitch spell decks. It's just crazy. Like, what is this wording? It draws, but it doesn't draw. It drums, but it also, like, triggers only twice each turn, but actually triggers 10,000 times per turn, because it's twice per every creature somehow. And if you ephemerate it, it resets just everything. <sighs> Crazy card. Yeah, also for it only triggered twice. I like read it. It had some parentheses. I was like, yeah, it's some bullshit. And then this ability triggers only twice each turn. I was like, yeah. They also, it was also a Doomwake spoiled card. So I was like, yeah, Doomwake has to be bad. Turned out, turn, turns out, not the case. Can't really kill it. You just draw your cards in response. With the Outrider Encore or something, or like with just your opponent triggers it to give you the cards. Whew, really good card. Ulamog the Defiler, 1 out of 5. I think Ulamog the Defiler is just worse than like normal Ulamogs for the most part. I think they messed up the wording. It kind of like feels a little bit like that. I don't know. As if it was supposed to say like this ability triggers only twice per turn after the parenthesis. To make it like happen twice per turn period. But it just happens every time. Did you know the seize itself if you create TVT ephemerated? Wamog? Yeah, what else? I guess I did. But also I don't care. Just not sure if it's better than Yoga as a deck. No, it will. You just wait. And yeah, Ulamog is like XL half your opponent's deck. Annihilator X, cool. Cool, bro. Ulamog plus Goraios. No, I mean... There's no cards in Exile then. When casting seems clearly preferable to cast the OG one. Oh, you're going to play pitch elementals and a Colorless blank in your deck. Good luck. Cause like the broken reality. 
with like a tiny little head popping out of here. Kozlek is pretty interesting to me for 9 mana 9-9. Nine nine. It's kind of like a mind rod because you can force your opponent to discard two cards and put them in play as creatures and then you draw like up to four cards. And then nine is not easy but maybe castable and maybe you can play like one one copy in the Eldrazi decks. No like Not like great or anything, but I could see it. It that heralds the end. If you want to play two drop in an Eldrazi deck, then I'm pretty sure that this is miles better than Eldrazi Mimic. Because here, that's why. I hope you understand why, what I mean by this. Not like a groundbreaking, maybe you don't even want a card like this in your deck, but I think you very well could. It's pretty okay. If there is an Eldrazi red aggro, this probably cuts it, cuts it into the deck, or like Eldrazi deck cuts it. Deserted Temple. And top target land. I don't get this at all. What's like. What What is the deal with this? Why they reprint this? Why is it $13 according to this? Bonkers with Cabal Coffers. Alright, here we go then. Keg W. The four ninety dollars is weather top XXX out of 100. So like I I get it, it's just that. Devourer of Destiny. Once upon a time, but shitty. Hoogins, Slabber and Fodder. I think the card is a little bit shitty, but maybe it does its job. I'll have to play with it to give it a proper rating. I'll put it in the free bracket for now. But it's like it's pretty clear. You play it alongside the Ugin Slabberin to make it work. Sylvan Safekeeper. I'll give it like a four. It's just, it's tied with Nadu, but it's a great Nadu card. It targets your creatures, it protects your Nadu, and also like opens up some options. You can also play the old Olerade with her variant. It's riding a spider, that's cute, I never noticed. The stats guy did math on it on Twitter, and what did we learn from that? How many would you play? Probably one or two. Springheart Nantuko. Oh, I'm gonna be generous, I'm gonna give it a four. Springheart Nantuko goes infinite with Arboreal Grazer Amulet, Seeming Grove Chamber. Not sure if that's relevant, but it also seems pretty good in Nadu from what I've seen so far and like the builds. It like would be the card that would let your Nadu actually draw your entire deck pretty easily because your lands are a creature, so then your lands redraw you more creatures or lands and then you like keep going and just never stops. Made it so that if you kept a 7 without Ugin's Labyrinth, you had like an extra 25% chance to hit. That's crazy. What about Basking Root Scale? You commented that you didn't rate it. I don't have the picture, so I can't rate it, but I'm gonna give it whichever 
rate you think is appropriate. Amulet in the right question mark. You could play it in amulet. I don't know if it's necessarily worth while an amulet. It probably is. Yeah, it always creates a 1 1 if you don't pay. The wording is a little bit confusing, but. Yeah. Infinite creature with every creature. Yeah, like just. I don't know if I vibe with infinite creature. An amulet. Well, it needs to be attached to actually go infinite in amulet. But also, like, then it's very easy for a color like that to, like, not matter in your amulet draw. And Sneaky Snacker, this returns if you activate Bazaar of Baghdad. So I found that interesting. Like, for modern, mostly relevant. Just wanted to bring that up. Planar Genesis. Probably like a slightly better Growth Spiral. Not that Growth Spiral was a particularly powerful modern card, but it's probably a tiny bit better overall. Yeah, you don't need to bestow it in Nadu, but you can. You need to bestow it in Titan to actually get the loop. Return to infinite grazers, you should be able to find a way to win. Perhaps, but maybe like not necessarily. Can't really pact for it in that spot. Because you won't have the mana to pay for the pact. This one looks very good in Sulta or Timur Reclamation. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Those are bad decks, but seems like a good card for those. Would I play Planar Genesis in Titan if it costs one green then? Yeah. Seems like it would be better than Explore, maybe. Probably. I think so. So Invert Polarity is a flip a coin cancel. I don't know. I just hope that it doesn't actually become playable because like you know they disqualify people for improperly determining match winners and then they print this and it's kind of make up your mind please Emra cool the world are new. I already talked about it a little bit. Uh, I'll be interested in trying Emra cool in a colorless slash green Eldrazi shell with Mikospin Solo. Sewing Mikospawn. Mikospin? Mikosin? This one. The Species Man and Thief of Existence, probably. Prismatic Vista with like a forest or two and wastes i'll just stomach having the forest in the deck to have some lands i can fetch off bosejo if i get bosejo so i think i think the trouble with casting emrakul holds it below the like top cards but i think it's still i still think it's really really strong Like it's it's like hard to work, but hard to work with it. But the payoff is there. Worn Power Stone can help your Eldrazi deck fight Blood Moon, Postport. It's a thought I had. That's all I have to say about it. 
Urza Scave. I've seen some like loops listed in the Amulet Discord with it. I didn't read through them fully and I don't understand what it does, but I'm slightly indifferently optimistic about it, I guess. Herigast. Herigast seems unplayable. I don't know why I put it on the list. So Eldrazi Dragon. Everything has a merge. Six red red six six. So you sacrifice the Materi Shaper that's five mana. Nah, no, that's way too much. Exile your hand and draw three cards. And then other cards have a merge. I think that's commander bait. Not good in modern. Null Drifter. Right, let's blow it, put Ugin's Labyrinth in the top tier. It's I don't think it's actually all that nuts, but it's still strong. So Jogu Free cast the big Eldrazi of it. Maybe. Maybe you're supposed to Herigas and then cast Ulamog for one mana. Immediately. Draw Ulamog cast it. So like it erupts from your reshaper, but then immediately Ulamog erupts out of it. Huh. So yeah, Wins Labyrinth seems like a lot of work is necessary, but. Solans are good, especially if you use it to cast not only Eldrazi but also Chalice and the Wandering. Those would be the good cards to cast earlier. The floor is a waste, that's great. <laughs> Said nobody ever. The floor is a waste, I hacking love casting wastes. <laughs> Kozlex Commando. Casting a Talisman could be nice too. Yeah, I'm not against that. Kozlex Commando is a way to sink your Ancient Tombs mana. It's a way to get to your big Eldrazi if you have big Eldrazi in your deck. It could be a removal, card draw, or like kill and draw. Kill and ramp, draw and ramp, or graveyard hate, or, and anything else. So it seems pretty flexible. It's also an Eldrazi card, so you can actually cast it with the temple. I think it should be, it's like, a, it's a good interaction card for the Eldrazi decks. Should be played. I think it looks really good, I should be included in those decks. Everyone is so hyped about the Tamiko WTF. Because Tamiko is good. Kill a construct dry card, yeah. Not against that. No drifter, a way to cheat seven mana cards into your deck again. Uh, make your labyrinth top four. Double mana, also a divination. You can do funky things with dress down. Where you evoke it, draw two, and you keep the Null Drifter with Annihilator 1. Null Drifter is mid, has no home. Holy fuck, chat. I love reviewing sets and then, like, chatters just say things. Chatters just be chatting and be like, yeah. It's this card no good. No, can't build a deck He's where it like fits whatsoever. It's literally impossible. I eat gravel. You do, yes. Thank you, Charlie Sky. No, it is literally impossible. Like you can't, you can't like put Cavern of Souls in an Eldrazi deck and evoke Null Drifter even occasionally and like cast it fifty percent of the time. Evoke it fifty percent of the time. No, you can't do that. One nice thing is that if you have the cheap Eldrazi, the it that heralds the end, you evoke it for two mana. It's pretty cool.
Imagined flute. Not emergent. Disruptor flute. I don't know why I thought it's an emergent flute. Uh, random hate card. Spells cost free more to cast. This is so funny that it has flash and you like are supposed to hold it. But then like your opponent plays the spell, you see what they played and you're like, oh shit, I can't name that spell anymore. It's already on the stack. And I guess it's just more flexibility thanks to Flash, but it just looks funny. Kind of like a ham-fisted design. Another hate card for Bazaar. It's over. It's over. I don't know, seems playable. Spike cast two naming Aluren and Dingo didn't draw Aluren. Holy shit, that looks good. Yeah, this looks solid. Could play Chalice of the Void in this deck too. Could also sneak in more. I'll play two forests. Like, I'll play a forest and prismatic vistas, though. Pretty hard to fit all of that, but I guess over a secluded courtyard or something. My worry is that if you don't run Chalice, then your deck is just all lands and no substance. And like all idiot monsters. But maybe Chalice is bad and then it would be reasonable not to run it. Null Elemental Blast is a cyborg card for Eldrazi's. Which I guess you'll play. Does this deck have Null Elemental Blast in the sideboard? No, because it doesn't have a sideboard. Makes sense. Uh, clashes with the chalice, but you can board it in against the territorial cavu deck and show them who's the boss. Three of existence and Fodnot Syrah pre soul interaction. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I guess they like Miko spawn, Synth Sun, Synth So is also pretty good. Answers to Nadu. Holy shit. Yeah, that's good. Well, three out of five is good, but like, yeah, it's relevant. Glazing Flash Raker Glaring Flash Raker This This actually like makes a Scion every time you cast a colorless spell so you can kind of loop it with like Mishra's Bubbles or stuff like that you just put a lot of shit into play There's some merit to that card. I don't know exactly how I would use it, but... It feels like you can in some ways. I'll give it two. Seems like very minor, but... Of course, it's too adjusted for being a Modern Horizons top one-third card, which still is pretty damn good. Nesting Grounds is a shitty scales card I don't care about. Winter Moon is one more way to bully basics, non-basics.
I don't know. What do you think of this card, chat? I don't... It's like one more of those cards like I don't have desire to think about. I think it's pretty shitty. Your point was simply just like untap the lands from playing it against winter moon in the cube it's really actually good and then if your opponent has a basic line and play like you need to have artifact mana to make it work white of the reliquary is it a good card or just a reference to an old card Play basic land deck with the flare. Holy shit, that's true. Yeah, that maybe is a home for the moon. It's a brew card. It's a card that pushes you in two different directions, and like I really don't know what to do with it. So it is kind of a brew card and a reference card. I think it goes into the Keck W. Column. White played really, really well against me. Dot, dot, dot. In CEDH. Hmm, thank you for mentioning. Weird deck with Supplier, Ritual, White, Gravecrawler, Flare of Cultivation, the Black Card goes Infinite Gravecrawler. Seems hard to run so many basics in a deck like this. You want to play one mana cards. And you want to play black monsters and flare of cultivation. I guess you can cut flare of cultivation from what you mentioned. And then it works. Yeah. Like I guess like a green black variant of the sacrifice deck I showed earlier. Feel like Flage might be the most controversial card in the set. One of the most. I see people say absolutely not, and others say it will 100% be a player. In that case, I'll be the voice of reason and I'll put it in 3 out of 5. I think Flage is. fine. Just seems Croxa level to me. It's a bit better to hardcast than Croxa, but also it costs 3 mana. Boros is, yeah. Boros is rough, like Boros, the decks don't exist. It's like two worst colors in Magic the Gathering. Is this good in Omnath? Maybe, kind of. Boros, Boros is a bit challenging, but doable. In the sideboard, yeah, sure. Well, I don't, yeah. I already named the tiers to S A so that people don't get confused. Well, yeah, red red is challenging. And like, you know, the the joke with like Croxa has played a moderate amount. And it's really not all that good to cast the front side of it. This doesn't seem very good to cast the front side of it either. Uro was played a whole bunch because it was just fine to cast it. And just fueled itself. Like casting it meant you had more cards, more material to escape with all that stuff. Aska might be scared of Fash versus Burn, Flash. Yeah. Probably play it with Fable. Fable, yeah, red Fable discard. What about the double faced cards that are lands, especially the green creature one? Well, it's right here. I talked about it. Other 
land cards. I just brought the ones with relevant front faces to the discussion and the other ones just gonna function as lands and bell chairs. That's what they're gonna do. Do you remember that Sagrar was great with Uro, but got played just before Uro was banned? Invasion of the Giants? Holy shit, I don't actually remember that. There was a Spike Invasion of the Giants deck, I remember. Mono Black Coffers with Winter Moon. It really brings me no pleasure to spend my mental energy on that. That said, there is a lot of stuff that looks strong and image free and it's, I think, from looking at it, it delivered on the promise of being a an interesting set. That's going to make me spend $2,000 on cards again. It's about time. And then I'll just play Titan. But it's going to be worse because there is three new hate cards. I think the primal player player's deck has potential. I have not thought about it all that much. Vexing Bubble. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. One tap, sack, draw a card. Holy guacamole. Eight dollars pre-order for Vexing Bubble. Holy shit. This looks good. Many many decks will play their own free spells, which will then interrupt the Vexing Bubble. Or rather be interrupted by Vexing Bubble, so you don't want to combine those two together. But if somehow your deck doesn't run free spells at all, then Vexing Bubble seems actually like an excellent choice that should be run in your deck. That perhaps will be true for some of the Eldrazi decks, so maybe you could even play like multiples of Vexing Bubble as a one mana card available in Eldrazi and then that would just hold your opponents. Probably not like well enough to run too many main deck, but... I'll give it A. It seems really good to me. Yeah, I'll buy cards. I'll split them by days. It's gonna be fine. Wait until you see the price on the doubling Eldrazi enchantment. Holy shit. I don't know how good be. I will need to look into that. Vexing Bubble is just the same as the 2 mana artifact. The effect is too niche, not enough targets. Well, it's also 1 mana in cycle, so it's very much not the same as the 2 mana artifact. So, you know, I think that's a pretty big deal. My thoughts on Buried Alive combo with Level Earth as Oracle and Narcomiba. That combo sounds fucked up. That's it, that's the list chat. I actually have to finish the stream now. I'll post it on Twitter later on and on Discord. But it was a pleasure. And I'll see you tomorrow. Necrogoyf is so high because I think it's good. 
See you, chat.